Welcome to This Day in Baseball. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat and every milestone and oddball event in between. Today's game is courtesy of ThisDayInBaseball.com. You can come for a peek, make friends for a lifetime. Before, after, and during the game, check out the links below the video and visit the player pages, parks, and teams as you listen to this blast from the past. You can catch us on every social media platform. And I want to do a special thanks to MLB Classic Radio Archives for this broadcast. Now, let's play ball. Well, friends, this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Brooklyn National League Baseball Club Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Brooklyn National League Baseball Club Incorporated is prohibited. Well, tonight, Chicago Cubs in town to open up a three-day series here with the Dodgers. Tomorrow night's game will be at Roosevelt Stadium, and Thursday they'll come back here to wind up the set. Moving in on Friday, Saturday, and for a doubleheader Sunday, the Cincinnati Red Legs. The Dodgers have a 3-0 record against the Cubs this year with two victories at Ebbets Field and one at Wrigley Field. Two of the ball games in the uh, western city, of course, were postponed because of bad weather. The Brooklyn record, by the way, against the Western Clubs this year is 10 and 6, 5 and 4 at home and 5 and 2 away. That victory in Chicago was posted by young Sandy Koufax, who blazed by a 13 strikeout in that ball game to get a 3-2 win. The two runs against Sandy by the Cubs were unearned in that one. Koufax will go to the firing line tonight, and opposing will be a young right-hander named Richard Fred Drott, known by his teammates as Dick Drott, purchased by the Cubs from Los Angeles on March the 5th this year. He's a big right-hander who is from Cincinnati. Last year with Los Angeles on the coast, he won 13, lost 10, and had an earned run average of 4.39. So it'll be Drott going against Koufax, Sandy Koufax the left-hander, and Dick Drott with the right-hander. Let's give you a rundown now on the batting orders for the two ball clubs. Leading off for Chicago, at second base will be Bobby Morgan. Left field, Speak. At third base will be Banks. In center field will be Walls. Ernega, the right fielder, E-R-N-A-G-A, a newcomer who has made quite an impressive start with Chicago. Day along at first base. Neiman, the catcher. Latrell at shortstop. And Dick Drott to do the pitching. For the Dodgers, Amaros in left field. Gilliam at second base. Duke Snyder in center. Gino Samoli in right field. Hodges at first. Campanella catching. Charlie Neal at third. Don Zimmer at short. And Sandy Koufax to do the pitching. The umpires for tonight's game will be Gorman at the plate. Dixon, Burkhart, and Dusty Boggess on the bases. Well, it's a fine night for a ball game. Still plenty of seats available here at Ebbets Field for this series opener, which welcomes the Dodgers back home after a long road trip. They went to the west and had the trip broken by a three-day stand here against the Giants and went back into Pennsylvania for a nine-game series. So it'll be the Dodgers and the Cubs as the western invasion begins for the second time this year. Still plenty of seats here at Ebbets Field, a fine night for a ball game. So if you're in the neighborhood, make your plans and come on over and see one. Koufax has stopped his uh, warm-ups now, and he's about ready to go, but the big Chicago right-hander, Dick Drott, is still firing away off to our left. Brooklyn, on this homestand, plays 15 games against the West, including two games at Jersey City, tomorrow night against Chicago, and June 10th against Milwaukee. There'll be two Sunday doubleheaders in the set, June 9th against Cincinnati, that'll be this coming Sunday, and then a week from Sunday against the St. Louis Cardinals on Father's Day. The Dodgers take the field now, and we'll remind you to be sure and pick up your tickets for those two big doubleheaders coming up. Sunday, June 9th, the Dodgers and the Cincinnati Redlegs, and Sunday, June 16th, with St. Louis. So the Chicago Cubs, Milwaukee Braves, Cincinnati Redlegs, and St. Louis Cardinals come to Ebbets Field, while the Dodgers here hope to make hay and gain a little ground in the National League standing. Going out to play now, third base, Charlie Neal at shortstop, Don Zimmer at second is Junior Gilliam, and at first, Gil Hodges. Sandy Amaros goes to left field, Duke Snyder to center, Dino Simoli to right. Campanella catching, Koufax pitching, and now our national anthem.
about time to play ball. The Dodgers are on the field defensively and the Chicago Cubs will start off with Morgan Speak and Banks to face left-hander Sandy Koufax and I imagine the Cubs remember that last outing against Koufax when 13 fanned the breeze. Koufax fired out a few to Roy Campanella and we'll have this one underway in just a moment. The Dodgers currently in third place in a tie with Milwaukee in the National League standings. Three games off the top and a game a half a game behind the Philadelphia Phils who are in second. The Dodgers on this long homestand coming up against the Western Club hope to pick up some ground. Koufax about ready now. Still uh, pumping him into uh, Roy Campanella. Fine evening for a ball game, and again, we ask you, if you're in the neighborhood, come on out to Ebbets Field and take this one in. It ought to be a good game between two fine young pitchers, Dick Drott for the Cubs and Sandy Koufax for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The bullpen crew going down right field for the Dodgers. Stepping into the batter's box, the Chicago leadoff man Bobby Morgan, and stepping into the microphone for the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company for the play-by-play, -play. here's Vince Scully. Vince? Thank you, Jerry, and good evening, everybody. And despite the fact that I have just knocked a cup of coffee in my lap and a suit that's just out of the cleaners, it's great to be home. Bobby Morgan, Bob Speak, and Ernie Banks in the first inning. So Sandy Koufax, a belated starter with Magley, the announced pitcher, out. And Koufax gets over the strike on one. Morgan batting 281. He has a run batted in. The lights have not as yet taken complete effect. Koufax trying to use that to his advantage now. Comes back with a fastball that's cut on and missed on two. You see that happen a lot in ball games especially night games or out at Chicago at the tail end of a game. The pitcher will rely more on his fastball. On to the count to Bobby Morgan. Koufax ready. Curveball is cut on and fouled away. On to the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn. Delighted to be sending it to you. Hope things are going just right for you, wherever you may be. Had a pretty good breeze blowing from the right field corner, slanting over to the left field corner. Strike two pitch. Slow curve got him swinging. Sandy Koufax, the last time he faced the Chicago Cubs out at Wrigley Field, you no doubt remember, he struck out 13. Going into tonight's ball game, he had 47 strikeouts. He's second man in the league, one back of Luis Arroyo of the Pirates. And now by striking out Bobby Morgan, Koufax now ties Arroyo. Bob Speak batting 243 with three home runs and 11 runs batted in. One out in the first inning, no score. Koufax ready and comes to the plate. Fastball inside, ball one. Tommy Gorman calling the balls and strikes. Hal Dixon at first, Kenny Burkhardt at second, and Dusty Bodges at third. Koufax staring in to get his sign. Campanella wigwags it out to him now. Neal in on the grass at third. The 1 0 pitch. Too high. Ball two. 2 0. Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs opening up a big stand here at Ebbets Field tonight and over at Jersey City tomorrow night. Don Drysdale will do the pitching for Brooklyn tomorrow evening. Two balls, no strikes to Bob Speak. One out on the first inning, no score. Koufax right back, and the fastball is inside. Ball three. Three and oh. Koufax at this moment, and of course it's only the second batter, is not nearly as fast as he was in Chicago. However, he's trying to loosen up, and right now he's bent over and tried to touch his toes. Three and oh the count. Sandy ready and delivers. Fastball low, ball four. So Bob Speak draws a walk with one out on the first inning. Ernie Banks batting 231. He has five home runs, 15 runs batted in. Out on deck, Lee Wall.
Andy Koufax and Roy Campanella, the Dodger battery. Koufax takes a peek at first, checks again and goes over there, and Speak, just off the bag, steps back. Hodges, Gilliam, Zimmer, and Neal, the outfield of Amaros, Snyder, and Simoli. Koufax had another look at first. Now the fastball is bonded up along the third baseline and goes foul. On one to Ernie Banks. Well, what have you been doing while we were away on the road through the state of Pennsylvania? Did you have a nice Memorial Day weekend and a big holiday? Hope you did. And I certainly hope you'll be making your plans to pay us a visit. Come on out to the ballpark. Be home for a while now. The entire West will come storming in. And the highlight invasions, of course, by Cincinnati and Milwaukee. So we'll be looking forward to seeing you out here at the ballpark. Banks waiting on one to count. Colfax bends a curve, and it's cut on and missed strike two. Sandy took a little off that, and Banks out in front. We have confirmation of the Chicago Cub pitcher for tomorrow night, Don Kaiser. So it'll be Don Kaiser and Don Drysdale tomorrow night at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. Banks waiting, 0-2 to count. Koufax goes to a stretch and pulls it down. Now the strike two pitch, fastball high, ball one. One and two. The Dodgers, for many, many reasons, are happy to be home. Not the least of which, extra time for batting practice. They've been out here quite a while today trying to get their eye back. Throw to first, Bob Speak back. You know, when you're the visiting ball club and you get into a hitting slump, it's pretty tough to correct it. For you only have a half hour of batting practice as a visitor. Home club can bat all day if they want. One and two pitch, fastball, got him swinging, and that thing was moving. So maybe Colfax is starting to loosen up a little bit. It wasn't very fast to Morgan or Speak, but that last strike to Ernie Banks had something on it. So he now has two strikeouts in the first inning. He is now one ahead of Luis Arroyo. Colfax now with 49 strikeouts. Lee Walls batting 226. Ten runs batted in. Two out in the first inning, no score. Bob Speak at first base. Sandy Colfax and Dick Drott in this one. Colfax takes a peek at first. Now left hand's a fastball in there that's cut on and foul to the right of the plate and close to the dugout. Campanella comes over to the lip of the dugout and he has no play. Ball finally winds up about four rows back of the dugout. On the count, young G.I. with his gal got that foul ball and proudly presented it to her. I like to see that in the ballpark. Another thing you like to see is a father catch a foul ball and hand it to his little son. That's my pop. <laughs> Ball's waiting on one the count. Colfax now ready and decides to go to first again and speak right back to the bag. Just to start a thing, so pull up a comfortable chair. If you want to take your shoes off, go ahead. Wiggle your toes, and we hope you'll have a cold shave for a two throughout the evening. Dodgers and Cubs opening up the homestand. Colfax set. Now the strike one pitch. Slow curve, a little high, just off the target, where Tom Gorman started to bring his right hand up and then quickly snapped it back to his side. One ball, one strike. Colfax said, another look at first. Again, he goes over there. And Bob Speak, who has not been having much of a lead, driven back to the bag again. <laughs> Lee Wall's waiting. Colfax ready. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fastball cut on and missed, and that was moving. One and two. So one thing, I'm pretty sure about this stage of the game now, Colfax has loosened up. He appeared to be a little stiff pitching to Morgan, even though he struck him out pinwheeled his arms around, did a couple of knee bends. Now he's starting to pitch with a loose motion. One and two, the count to Lee Walls. Two out in the first inning, no score. Colfax set, takes a peek at speak, comes to the plate with a curve and misses high. Two and two.
Freddie Fitzsimmons coaching at first for Chicago. Round at third, George Myatt. Two balls, two strikes. Colfax set and delivers. Fastball cut on is a high pop fly and a very shallow right center. Back Gilliam's going out and calling. Samoli trotting in behind him, and Gilliam takes it for the out. So in the first inning, no runs, no hits. It was one walk. One man left on. Colfax strikes out two. At the end of half an inning, Chicago nothing, and the Dodgers coming up. Coming up right now with the Schaefer scoreboard, Jerry Doggett. Well, Benny, there's a lot of activity going on tonight in the major league. Milwaukee playing the Giants at the Polo Grounds. Crone going against Miller. Cincinnati at Philadelphia. Lawrence against Haddix. St. Louis at Pittsburgh. It'll be Schmidt against Smith. And those St. Louis Smiths are still getting together. Bob Smith, who formerly was with the Cardinals, pitching tonight for Pittsburgh. And Willard Smith going for St. Louis. In the American League, the Yankees play at Cleveland. Sturdivant going against Daly. Boston and Chicago out of Chicago. Sullivan or Sisler against Pierce. Washington at Detroit. It'll be Clevenger against Moss. And Baltimore and Kansas City. Lowe's against Morgan. The games, of course, Chicago, Detroit, and Kansas City will uh, be somewhat behind us. Chicago-Detroit game will start at 9 o'clock New York time. And the Kansas City game will be at 10 o'clock. The Yankee-Cleveland game about to get underway. Our score at the end of a half inning of play, nothing, nothing. The Dodgers coming on, so let's get back to play, and here's Ben. Sandy Amaros, who's doing a fine job spelling Carl Perillo, though Amaros is playing in left field. He got into the lineup because of Perillo's stiff neck. Amaros batting 320. He has three home runs, nine runs batted in. Amaros followed by Jim Gilliam and then Duke Snyder. Dick Drott, D-R-O-T-T, -T, loosening up right now. Richard Frederick Drott, to be exact. He throws hard. He has 46 strikeouts. So if you're keeping score, we'll probably be putting a few Ks in the book tonight. Koufax recorded two in the first inning. Now we'll find out about Dick Drott. Amaros wiggling that bat back of his left ear, settles in the hitter's box, and here we go to the last of the first. Drott delivers, fastball outside, ball one. In fact, any time you go into Chicago, come to think of it, especially in the spring or in the fall when you don't get that bright sunshine for too long, and you run into Drott, Drabowski, or Kaiser, you could be in for quite a sad afternoon. A 1-0 pitch to Amaros, who runs up as if DeBondon takes it inside, ball two. 2-0. Two Some fine young ball players coming into their own this year. It's always a good sign for the league and for baseball. Rod ready. Now the 2-0 pitch to Amaros. In there. Looks like he changed up on it. 2-1. and one. Dodgers, of course, proud of their three youngsters. Johnny Padres, Sandy Colfax, Don Drysdale. For that matter, Gino Simoli, too. Drott gets a sign now. Dick ready and the 2 1 pitched Amaros. Fastball uppercut it and a high pop fly. Ernie Banks calling, waiting. He's got it. One out. Jim Gilliam, who must be very happy to be back here in Brooklyn. He's had trouble, needs extra batting practice. He's hitting 251. Ten runs batted in. On deck, Duke Snyder. Ernie Banks wide of the bag at third, but on the edge of the infield grass. Dick Drott goes to work now. The right-hander comes with a fastball and gets it over for the strike. Going one. Jake Butler coaching at first. Around a third, Billy Herman. Drop right back again. The strike one pitch is a breaking ball. It's down low. One and one. One ball, one strike. Drop delivers one one. The curveball breaks low and inside. Ball two. Two and one. It might be a slider. It's not that sharp curveball. Just seems to break in a little bit and drop. Two balls, one strike to Jim Gilliam. One out, bottom of the first inning, no score. Rod ready and the 2-1 pitch. Fastball just outside, ball three. Three and one.
Schneider waiting on deck. Drop ready and the 3 1 pitch to Gilliam. Pass ball high and Junior's on. So with one out, Gilliam draws the walk and it brings up the Duke. And a trouble Duke he is with a 245 batting average. He's still hitting the long ball. He has nine home runs to lead the club and 20 runs batted in. Out on deck, Gino Simoli. One out, bottom of the first inning, no score. Gilliam at first base. Snyder waiting at the plate now. Drott for the first time having to work from a stretch position. Dick comes out. A peak at first. Now he works the plate. Sharp curve outside. Ball one. One and oh. One ball. No strikes. Drott ready. Now the 1 0 pitch. Snyder looks at a fastball. It's down low. Ball 2. 2 0. Dick Drott, as we said, a strikeout man. He has struck out 46 thus far this year. And the high for him, which is also a league high, Dick Drott struck out 15 in one ball game. The other two, close to that, Colfax and Roberts, have each struck out 13. Drott delivers 2 0 to Snyder, and the fastball is high. Ball 3. 3 0. That 15 strikeout performance by Dick Drott is also now a Chicago club record. No pitcher in the history of the Cubs ever struck out that many men in one game. And he's 20 years old. No, he should be around Chicago for quite a while. Three balls and no strikes to Snyder. Drott ready and delivers. Fastball outside. Ball four. And so the fellow who can fire that baseball currently has trouble with control, too, and he has walked two men with one out in the first inning. And here's Gino Simoli, who's certainly been carrying the banner for Brooklyn throughout the West, and then, of course, in Pennsylvania. He was hurt on the Western trip, but he still had that red-hot batting average, and he brings up a 346 average to the plate. In his last 11 ball games, Simoli has batted 432. Well, you spell his name in capital letters. Gino Simoli. Gilliam coming away from second. Snyder from first. One out, bottom of the first inning, no score. From Ebbett Field in Brooklyn. Dick Drott ready. Checks his runners and delivers. Fastball inside. Ball one. Simoli continues to look around at Billy Herman in case there might be something up in the air. Good batter will always check with his third base coach, not just on a 2 and 0 and 3 and 0 count. One ball, no strikes. Dick Drott ready. Another look to his base runners and comes to the plate and misses again. Down low, ball two, 2 and 0. Now Dale Long comes over from first to have a few words, and Bob Sheffing going out to the mound to see just what's wrong with Dick Drott. Long leaves the mound, and Sheffing, the next catcher, going out to try and settle his young pitcher. Dick Drott and Cal Neiman, the battery. Dale Long, Bobby Morgan, Jack Luttrell, Ernie Banks in the infield. The outfield, Bob Speak, Lee Walls, and the right fielder, Frank Renega. Simoli waiting, two balls, no strikes. Dick Drott comes set now, checks his runners, and the 2 nothing pitch is Simoli. Down low, ball three. Drott, as far as his record is concerned, with 46 strikeouts, he had walked 28 men. For a fellow who throws that hard, that's very good. But he's having his problems here. One pitch away from loading up the bases. The 3-0 pitch to Simoli. Barreled in there for a strike. 3-1. and one. Gilliam hands on his hips. A short lead off second. Snyder inching away off first. One out in the first inning in case you might have just dropped by. No score. Drott set. Checks his man. Now the 3-1 pitch. Fastball is in there again. Strike two. 
Oh, Dick Grant has gone to a full count. And now with one out, Samoli and Messrs. Gilliam and Snyder on the base paths take a look over at third base coach Billy Herman. See if they play a little run and hit or not. Grant looks down the barrel to get his sign. Neiman wigwags it out to him. The runners go. The three tour is cut on and fouled away down the right field line on top of the roof and out of the ballpark. So the kids are listening to the ball game on the soda pop stands outside. You run that one down almost to Bedford Avenue. Full count to Simoli. The runners were going on the pitch. We'll see what they do this time. Dick Grot shaking no. Now he's ready. Checks his runners. They go. The three-two are cut on foul tip and held by Neiman, and his throw goes into left field. Gilliam is up, comes to the plate, and Schneider goes to third. So Samoli strikes out. What happened was he foul tipped the ball right into the webbing of Neiman's glove, and the young catcher, in such a hurry to get his man at third, threw the ball into left field. So Samoli strikes out. The runners advance to second and third, and Gilliam comes on in on the throwing error. And I imagine that they'll give them stolen bases on it. However, we will wait for the verdict of the official score. Both Snyder and Gilliam given credit for stolen bases, and then Gilliam comes in to score on the catcher's overthrow, Snyder advancing to third. Dodgers lead one to nothing here in the first inning. Two out, and Gil Hodges steps in. Sharp curve in and over for a strike. Go on one. Brooklyn one, Cubs nothing. Bottom of the first inning. Duke Snyder coming down off third with two out. Hodges batting 344. Drop ready in the strike one pitch. Fastball a little low. Hodges dropped his back foot back and slid that bat between his hands as if he was going to bunt. Snyder started to come down the line, then retreated. One ball, one strike. Gill's been red hot in his last 16 ball games. He's hit at a 403 clip. Drop to his windup now. The 1 1 pitch to Gill. Fastball low. Ball two. Two and one. So two walks. A double steal and a throwing error by catcher Cal Neiman, and Brooklyn leads one to nothing. Two and one to count to Gil Hodges. Rod ready, the two one pitch, fastball low and outside, ball three. On deck, Roy Campanella. Still no action in the Chicago bullpen. Early in the ball game, and he'll go with a fellow who can throw as well as Drott. 3 1 pitch to Hodges. Slow curve, missed inside. Ball four. So Hodges walks, the third walk given up by Dick Drott. Runners at first and third with two out, and it brings up Roy Campanella. Campanella batting 239 has seven home runs, 22 runs batted in. Camp settling in the hitter's box now. Drott having a rough first inning. At least control-wise, he has been charged with only one run. Checks his runners and delivers to Campy, and the fastball is at his knees for a strike. On one. Two out, bottom of the first inning. Runners at first and third. Brooklyn leads one to nothing. just waiting drop staring in now the right hander ready and the strike one pitch curve ball it backs Campanella out of there one ball one strike we're happy to salute our Schaefer award winners for the week Johnny Padres and Gino Simoli simoli has been a big winner we'll probably end up with half the brewery at the rate he's going <laughs> Drott set. And the 1-1 pitch to Campy. Curve outside. Ball two. Two and one. 
They have some wonderful gifts, you know, Schaefer Awards. All kinds of home appliances and radios. Wearing blenders and mixers and things like that. Luggage. Caminello waiting, two balls, one strike. Drott delivers two and one to Roy. Fast ball, and that's low, ball three. So Dick Drott having trouble with his control now. He's walked three men here in the first inning. One run is over. He might have been out of it had the ball not stuck in Neiman's web. However, once it did that, and the young catcher made a hurried throw, went into left field. 3-1 pitch to Campanella. Fastball cut on a high drive to deep right field. Back goes Onega. This one's going to be off the side of the scoreboard and bounding away. In comes Snyder. Right back of him is Hodges on a stand-up double by Campanella. Ernega, E-R-N-A-G-A, 26-year-old right fielder. This is the first time he has ever played at Ebbets Field. And many a right fielder has spent a sleepless night thinking about that concave wall and the many-sided scoreboard. And that thing took the wrong carom as far as Ernega was concerned, bounced all the way over near the foul line. So Campanella doubles high off the Schaefer scoreboard. The right drives in two more. And the Dodgers now lead 3 to nothing in the first inning. Cabanella now has 24 runs batted in. Roy at second. Charlie Neal, the batter, with two out, and the fastball comes low. Ball one. Bob Sheffing, going along with his young pitcher, finally stands up in front of his dugout and motions with his right hand to get somebody loose down there in the bullpen. They didn't see him, and he now finds out about the telephone, so he'll ring. Curve to Charlie Neal in for the strike. One and one. So they are moving around now in the Chicago bullpen. Brooklyn three runs on one hit. Throwing error by catcher Neiman got one run over and Campanella has just doubled in two. The one one pitch now to Neal cut on and missed one and two. Neal waiting, one ball, two strikes. Two out on the first inning, three nothing Brooklyn. Cavanella coming away off second base. Now the one and two pitch to Neal is cut on and missed, strike three. So Charlie goes down and that closes out the first inning. So both starting pitchers with reputations of being strikeout men and each starter has struck out two men in the first inning. However, Colfax walked just one man and got out of the first inning. Dick Drott is charged with three runs on one hit, a double steal, a costly throwing error, and one man left on. At the end of one inning, Brooklyn three, Chicago nothing. Now let's hear from Jerry. Well, now, while the field changes hands, let's have a couple of young friends take the spotlight. How about it? For real, real enjoyment, Hello. get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Mm. For real, real enjoyment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. For real, real refreshment, Say it. get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Yeah. For real, real refreshment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. <laughs> That's a real trumpet. That's real beer. For real, real enjoyment, get Schaefer, Schaefer beer. Mm. For real, real enjoyment, ask for Schaefer. It's real beer. All right, set to play ball in the second inning. Let's go right back to the action, and here again is Ben Scully. Frank Ernaga, E-R-N-A-G-A. He's come up from Portland, and has certainly give the Cubs some power. He's batting 353. He's only 17 at bats. Frank Ernaga, first pitch to him, down low, ball one. Frank, with six hits, has two home runs, Two triples and a double. Extra base hits. Right-hand batter. E-R-N-A-G-A. 
Koufax ready and the 1 0 pitch. Fastball in for the strike. 1 and 1. It's a good thing Arnago or Nago was not. Uh, was a good thing he wasn't a girl because he would have been upset about the age that they first announced about him. Ooh, they said he was 37. He's 26. The 1 1 pitch. Fastball just low. Ball 2. 2 and 1. Be followed by Dale Long and then catcher Cal Neiman. Giants in Milwaukee, a 1 1 tie at the end of an inning and a half. Koufax ready. Now the 2 1 pitch. Fastball in there. Strike two. In that ball game, Ray Cohn and Stu Miller for the Giants, a 1 1 tie at the end of an inning and a half. Frank Torrey at a home run for the Braves. Willie Mays at a home run for the Giants. Arnago waiting now. The 2 2 pitch. Fastball got him swinging. That is the third strikeout for Sandy Koufax and brings up Dale Long. Long batting 243 has five home runs, 16 runs batted in. Long, powerful left hand batter, formerly with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Out on deck, Cal Neiman. First pitch to Long, in and over for a strike on one. As soon as Dale has had his at bats, we'll duck in a station break. Koufax right back again, and the slow curve is just outside. One ball, one strike. We're in the second inning, one out, base is empty. Brooklyn three and Chicago nothing. Koufax winds, a 1-1 pitch, fastball, cut on, 1-2. and two. Bends at the waist to get his sign from Campanella. Now he's ready. One and two pitch. Slow curve down low. Two and two. Philadelphia Phillies leading Cincinnati one to nothing at the end of an inning and a half. I mean, those fills are rough. Long waiting. Two balls, two strikes. Colfax delivers. Fast ball inside. Right at the knuckles. Ball three. count. Koufax nods in agreement with Campanella. Now he's ready. 3-2 pitch. Fastball fouled away. The lights are beginning to take effect now here at the ballpark. Funny when the lights go on. The gray sky up ahead now appears to be nice and blue. Much nicer looking evening. Full count to Dale Long. Koufax ready. Sandy winds in the three tour. Fastball on the corner. Call strike three. And Dale Long is caught looking. Jaws away with Tom Gorman, but let us pause now for station identification. This is the uh, 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodgers games. And right to WOKO for the complete Dodgers schedule of games at home and away. Yours free for the asking. Be sure to give your name and address. Right, baseball, WOKO, Albany, New York. And New York. All right, back at Ebbets Field. Two out on the second inning. Cal Neiman, the batter, and the first pitch in for the strike. On one. It was a very troubled and bitter Dale Long who left the plate. He took his helmet off and fired it about 25 feet along the box seats. The bat boy had to run down the line to get it. Kofax has now struck out four men in an inning and two thirds. Sandy right back. I mean, it looked like he changed up and ballooned it too high. One and one. Cal Neiman batting 267. He has six home runs, 15 runs batted in. One and one. Colfax looks into Campanella. Roy blinks signs out to him. Now the one one pitch. Fastball cut on and missed. One and two. 
Andy Koufax now has 51 strikeouts to be the leader. He has passed Arroyo. Koufax checking again. One and two the count. Sandy hides that ball back of his left hip. Now he's ready. One and two pitch. Change curve. Fouled at the plate and squirts away from Campanella. Roy got stung by it a little. Hit him off the right knee. One and two. The count to Cal Neiman. tomorrow night at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. Don Kaiser and Don Drysdale. The one and two pitch to Neiman. Fastball got him swinging. He struck out the side. Sandy Koufax has now struck out five men in two innings. Remember the last time he faced the Cubs he struck out 13. At the end of an inning and a half Brooklyn three Chicago nothing. Now here's Jerry. You want a glass of beer. You want a good glass of beer. You want a great glass of beer? Brother, you want a glass of Schaefer beer. Because Schaefer's brewed for enjoyment. That's why. That's the whole story in a nutshell. Schaefer is brewed to give you all the enjoyment, all the light, dusty flavor, all the brilliant sparkle and zing you look for when you lift a glass of beer to your lips. And when you lift a glass of Schaefer, man, it's sunlight on a drift of snow. Cool and white and wonderful. You try it yourself. First time a thirst catches up with you. For real enjoyment, pour out a foaming glass of Schaefer. You'll see, it's real beer. The Dodgers come on with Zimmer, Koufax, and Amaral. First to appear against Dick Drott. And the battle of the strikeout artist goes on. Koufax now ahead 5-2. Dodgers leading three to nothing. So let's get back to play. And here again is Ben. Well, Don Zimmer will be first up. Then pitcher Sandy Koufax and Sandy Amaros. Bottom of the second, three nothing Brooklyn. We understand at the agency that we now have a young girl writing commercial copy. And I will bet you her fine hand was in that last one. Sunlight on a drift of snow. All right. <laughs> Zimmer batting 229. He has four home runs, 13 runs batted in. Drops fastball, is uppercut it and foul by. Cal Neiman on the run, stumbles. He doesn't have a play. Remains on his feet. <laughs> on one, the count to Zimmer. Last of the second inning, three nothing Brooklyn. Bottom of the second. Dick Drott looks in to get his sign. Zimmer bends at the knees a little bit more now. And the strike one pitch. Fastball cut on is a high foul to the right of the plate. Neiman coming back right to the lip of the Dodger dugout and can't make it. The ball lands on the roof. And somebody makes a great catch by the name of Barney Stein. Barney, who takes great sports photos for the New York Post, he is also the Brooklyn Dodgers official photographer. And that thing kangarooed from the dugout roof Right up into the camera booth, and there was Barney to grab it. He dropped a $9,000 camera in the process. No, not really. <laughs> 0 and 2. Pass ball is outside. Knocked down by Cal Neiman. One ball, two strikes. We're in the last of the second. Brooklyn 3, Chicago nothing. Everybody a little extra chipper tonight now that we're home. Drott to his wind up and delivers. Curve ball in there. Call strike three. Zimmer knew it and walked away. That's the third strikeout for Dick Drott. The eighth strikeout on the game, and we have one out in the bottom of the second. Now, the last time anything like this began was out at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Mo Drabowski struck out eight men. Koufax struck out 13. The record, the total for a ball game, 24. The National is 23. So we'll keep an eye on it. Pitch to Koufax in for the strike, going one. On that particular day, the total of strikeouts tied the National League record, 23. 
We're starting to build up to something like that again tonight. Strike one pitch to Koufax. Up high, one and one. But want to know who had the other two strikeouts? Turk Lown in relief. One and one to Sandy Koufax. Drought ready and delivers. Fastball cut on late and missed. One and two. Koufax is 0 for 10, but he has shown progress. The last few times up, he's hit the ball and once or twice fairly well. Drott getting his sign. Koufax waiting. Now the one and two pitch to Sandy. Fastball got him. So down he goes. Four strikeouts for Dick Drott. So that sword has two edges. Koufax been cutting down the Cubs and now he nubs the finger himself. Koufax struck out all three men in the second inning. Drott has struck out three in a row as he faces Amaros here in the second. Drott ready and delivers. Slow curve in for the strike. Charlie Neal struck out to close out the first inning and here in the second Zimmer and Koufax have gone that way. Oh, we're seeing plenty of strikeouts. Amaros batting 314 popped out in the first inning. 0 for 1. Drott delivers. Fastball low. 1 and 1. At the end of two innings, we'll be ducking in scores all night long. The Phillies are leading Cincinnati 3 to nothing at the end of two innings. The Giants are leading Milwaukee 2 to 1 at the end of two innings. The Yankees leading Cleveland 3 1 at the end of an inning and a half. Slow curve fouled away at the plate. 1 and 2. Schaefer Beers sending it all to you. Hope you'll have a cold Schaefer while you're listening to the ball game. The one and two pitch now to Amaros. Fastball low. Two and two. We have two out in the second inning. We've had nine strikeouts in the ball game. Koufax has struck out five. Dick Drott has struck out four. The 2 2 pitch to Amaros. Fastball just low. Ball three. Three and two. Drott is not overpowering. In fact, I don't think he even looks quite his weight. He's even six, and he weighs 185 pounds. 3 2 pitch to Amaros. Outside, ball four. Oh, Sandy Amaros walks with two out in the second inning. It is the fourth walk given up by Dick Drott. Brooklyn three, Chicago nothing, and the batter Jim Gilliam. Jim walked in the first inning, was the front man on a double steal. Actually, it was a run and hit play, and Simoli struck out. And on the late throw to third, which went into left field, Gilliam picked himself up and came in to score. Jim batting 251. Drop up on the rubber now and comes set. Takes a peek at Amaros. Two down. Comes to the plate, and the fastball is outside. Ball one. I'll tell you one thing, when you're behind a pitcher like Dick Drott, and say the outfielders tonight, Bob Speak and Lee Walls and Frank Ornega, they really have to fight themselves to bear down and get a pitcher having trouble with control, and it's tough for the outfielders. The 1-0 pitch to Gilliam, cut on a big bouncer right to Dale Long. He goes up the ladder to grab it and steps on the bag, and that's it. In the second inning, no runs, no hits, there was one man left on base. At the end of two innings of play, Brooklyn three, Chicago nothing. Once again, a few words from Jerry. Well, here's something you won't want to miss, friends. The largest musical event in the country. Music Under the Stars, June 19th at Ebbets Field. Part one will be an Israeli folk festival with the Gorham Dancers and the Cooper Smith Choral Group. Part two features the New York Philharmonic Orchestra with a Metropolitan Opera star as soloist. And part three is a sparkling variety show with a show from the Copacabana and a host of your favorite stars, including Jerry Lewis. Get your tickets now at the Dodger Ticket Office or at Ebbets Field. The price range from a dollar and up. Don't miss Music Under the Stars, June 19th, right here at Ebbets Field. Move along to the top of the third in just a moment with the shortstop for Chicago, Jack Luttrell, coming on, followed by Dick Drott, and then by the leadoff man, Bobby Morgan. Sandy Koufax now has five strikeouts. Dick Drott has four. So we're really having one going here tonight. Dodgers three, Cubs nothing. 
top of the third. Back to action, and here again is Ben. Jack Littrell stepping in at batting 140 with three runs batted in. Want to spotlight something we forgot about before. Pay tribute to a fine group. Colfax checking his signs now with Campanella. Sandy winds and delivers. Fast ball for a strike. On hand tonight, the typical Brooklyn family selected by the Brooklyn Historical Society. Mr. and Mrs. Gerald O'Donnell and their children are guests of the Dodgers tonight. Strike one pitch the curve a little high, one and one. Mr. and Mrs. O'Donnell and their family live at 2683 Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. And we're certainly happy to have them here. The 1 1 pitch to Jack Littrell. Fastball outside. Ball two. Two and one. Start of the third inning. Brooklyn three. Chicago nothing. Sandy Koufax and Dick Drott. Koufax checking signs again with Campy. Now the 2 1 pitch. Fastball cut on and missed. Two and two. Well, I might have said earlier. When the first two batters up there, the Colfax appeared not to be loose, but now he is firing. He struck out the side in the second inning. Two balls, two strikes. Luttrell then pitcher Dick Drott and leadoff man Bobby Morgan. Colfax ready now to his windup. The two-two fastball got him swinging. So Luttrell strikes out. Four strikeouts in a row for Colfax. He has struck out six men in two and a third inning. In other words, eight men have come to bat. And only one of them has hit the ball. That was Lee Walsh who popped up. The other man walked. Curve is fouled away by pitcher Drott. 0 1. Drod batting 2-11. Colfax is remarkable with his strikeouts this year. Figure out how many innings he's pitched and then look at his strikeouts, you really start to shake your head. The strike one pitch to Drod. Curveball low, one and one. Sandy has struck out six men tonight thus far in two and a third innings to give him 53 strikeouts. Now let's check his innings. His work 44 and the third inning struck out 53 men. The one one fastball cut on and belted to left field. And back goes Ambrose so away back to the wall and grabs it going away. <laughs> Low pitcher Dick Drott. It's a long fly ball to left center for the second out. Bobby Morgan struck out in the first inning. Bob batting 277. Brooklyn three, Chicago nothing in the third inning. Caminola settling now back of the plate to hang out his signs. Morgan waiting. The outfield about straight away. Koufax sends him a fastball for a strike on one. You know the record, of course, for the most strikeouts in one game. I'm pretty sure. At least you'd know the name of the fellow who did it in one game. Well, he doesn't play anymore, but he just retired. Strike one pitch. Cut on, hit off the thumbs, and popped up in the very shallow left. Ambrose comes running in under it now and takes it for the out. So Morgan pops out to shallow left field. And the Cubs go out in order one, two, three. Colfax has retired the last eight men in a row. The guy who struck out 18 was Bob Feller, and now here's Jerry. You know, folks, the Schaefer people have been brewing their famous beer for 115 years now. It's America's oldest lager beer. But that doesn't mean you can't get it in the newest of containers. No, sir. The Schaefer people keep right up with the time. Take the handy Schaefer half-quart can, for instance. Designed for modern living. Trim and slim. It's a cinch to carry, a cinch to tuck away inside your refrigerator. Takes up hardly any room, and it cools in a flash, too. Inside, you've got 16 ounces of tasty pleasure, two full glasses of golden amber Schaefer beer. Perfect for young couples who like to share their fun, old friends who want to clink glasses, 
anybody who's just plain thirsty. So next time you're out shopping, why not pick up a few six-packs of handy Schaefer half-quart cans? Each one holds two full glasses of real enjoyment. That Schaefer beer, man, it's real beer. Last of the third, Duke Snyder, Gino Simoli, and Gil Hodges do up for Brooklyn. Score Dodgers three, Cubs nothing. Back to play, and here again is Vin. Talking about strikeouts now, since they might very well become a very important part of the game, Dick Drott has struck out four. Sandy Koufax has struck out six. The National League record for the total of strikeouts, 23 in a game. The American League record, 24. The most strikeouts by an individual in one game, Bob Feller struck out 18. The National League record is 17 by Dizzy Dean. You might be thinking about those things, so we pass them along to you. All right, bottom of the third, 3-0 Brooklyn. Duke Snyder, Gino Simoli, and Gil Hodges. Snyder walked in the first inning, Duke batting 245. Rod has a sign now. Dick winds and delivers. Fastball cut on is a high drive to deep center field. Going away back near the bleachers. Just watching it. It's gone. Lee Walls just had to let her go. And the ball bounces out of the lower deck of the bleachers. Walls picks it up and throws it in the upper deck. is a man at a home run in the lower deck right now. Snyder hit a bullet into the seats. It bounced high in the air back onto the field. Walls caught it just as nice as you please and fired it upstairs in the upper deck. So Snyder hits his 10th home run, his 21st run batted in. The Dodgers lead four to nothing and Gino Simoli takes the pitch inside. It drives him out of there. Ball one. That's only the second hit for Brooklyn. The other, a double by Campanella. Drott winds in the 1-0 pitch to Simoli. A fastball outside. Ball 2. 2-0. Two Schaefer Beer sending you all the fun and excitement from Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. 4-0 Dodgers here in the third. The 2-0 pitch to Simoli. Fastball down low. Ball 3. 3-0. Winds and the 3-0 pitch to Simoli at his knees and over for the strike. Three and one. On deck, Gil Hodges. Brooklyn, four runs on two hits. Chicago, no runs, no hits, one error. That a throwing error by catcher Cal Neiman. 3-1 pitch. Fastball fouled away. Trickling on over into the Cub dugout. Three and two. Checks the signs. Now the 3-2 pitch to Simoli. Drives him back. High and tight. Ball four. So Simoli walks. That is the fifth walk given up by Dick Drott. Koufax, who has struck out six, has not walked a man. The batter, Gil Hodges, who walked in the first inning. Gil batting 344. Nobody out here in the third. Brooklyn four, Chicago nothing. Drott looks in to get his sign. Right at the bag is Simoli. Held on by Dale Long. Now the right-hander delivers. Fastball cut on and missed. 0-1. And I think Hodges trying to go to right field that time, the way he moved his feet. He certainly had right fielder Frank Ornega thinking that way, for he was heading towards the foul line. 0-1 the count. One of the big reasons why Hodges is now a fine hitter, the fact that he's been able to hit that pitch to right. Strike one pitch to him, curveball cut on it to left center. On the run, coming over his walls, bends down and traps the ball. Samoli is around second, going to third and will beat the throw. And down to third goes Hodges. Lee Walls tried to backhand the ball at his ankles. And all he could do was trap it. So Hodges doubled. Simoli, of course, had to hold up and now gets as far as third. So 
the Dodgers have three hits off Dick Drott, two doubles and a home run. They have run as at second and third with nobody out, and the batter, Roy Campanella, who doubled in two runs in the first inning. Jim Brosnan gets up now in the Chicago bullpen and begins to loosen up. Big right-hander. Campanella hitting 245. The infield must play in tight now. Nobody out. Simoli at third, Hodges at second. 4-0 Brooklyn here in the third inning. They're trying to break it wide open. Drott to his windup and delivers, and Campanella is hit by the pitch in the ribs on the left side, just under his number. Doc Wendler comes out, and boy, that hurts. A fastball right in the ribs. So Campanella with his left hand holding his ribs, walking up along first. Walter Olson comes out now, and Wendler refuses to let Campanella walk. He stops him right there. Boy, that thing hurt. That was a sidearm fastball that just sailed right in at him and hit him right at the ribs. Roy bent over slightly, Doc Wendler with his arm around him. So more complications. You know, Rube Walker has a couple of stitches on his right hand. Campanella trying to breathe, and I imagine every time he does, there's a sharp bite of pain. Doc Wendler, Jake Fettler, and Walter Olson watching the catcher, still rubbing his left side. He has his back to us, but I'm pretty sure he got it right in the ribs. Roy wants to stay in the ball game. Starting to go to first now, Carl Erskine comes out to run for him. And Erskine continues on towards first base, so whether Campanella likes it or not, they want him to come out. Roy, of course, likes to play, but he's hurting. Yep, he got it on the left side, probably just under the heart. And Campanella comes out. He's walking a little better now, but boy, he was shaken up. So Dick Drott with a fastball. It's Campanella in the chest or the left side near the ribs, and he comes out. Erskine running for him. The bases are loaded. Nobody out. And the batter, Charlie Neal. The infield remains up tight. Simoli at third. Hodges at second. Erskine at first. Drott delivers. Fastball. Cut foul to the roof and out of the ballpark. 0 and 1. So Roy Campanella hit either in the just under the heart or around the ribs. Erskine running for him, and Rube Walker with a couple of stitches in his right hand will still come back into the ballgame. Neal waiting. Drott winds in the strike one pitch. Curve fouled away. 2 to Neal. Nobody out. Base is loaded. 4 nothing. Brooklyn in the third. Drott delivers. Sidearm curve hit through the hole into left field for a base hit. In comes Simoli. Right back of him is Hodges and the Dodgers lead 6-0. So Charlie Neal bounces one through the drawn-in left side and drives in two. The Dodgers didn't score this many runs in the entire trip through Pennsylvania. And here in the third inning, they lead six to nothing. O'Neill with a base hit and two runs batted in. Bob Sheffing going out to the mound, and maybe we'll have a change right here. Simoli scoring from third base. Hodges coming in from second. That's the fourth hit of Dick Drott. Sheffing making his way out to the mound. Cal Neiman is there. Carl Erskine at second. Charlie Neal at first. Brooklyn six runs on four hits. Chicago, no runs, no hits. We're in the bottom of the third. Brooklyn scored three times in the first inning, three times in the third. And still nobody out here in the third. We'll have a change of pitches, and while we do have, supposing we duck in a station break, make everything legal, we'll pause the station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. For the top... Dial 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodgers games and write to WOKO for the complete Dodgers schedule of games at home and away. Yours free for the asking. Be sure to give your name and address. Write Baseball WOKO Albany, New York. Well, back here at Ebbets Field with the Dodgers leading 6 to nothing. Dick Drott worked two innings plus. He relieved by Jim Brosnan. Drott in two innings plus gave up six runs. The runners at first and second also belong to him. Drott six runs, four hits. He walked five men. Of course, that was his undoing. 
He hit one man, Campanella. And while we're talking about Campanella, wondering whether the ball hit him in the ribs or under the heart, we now have the report from the dugout that it hit him just under the or over the heart, right around that area. It really stunned him. So Campanella out. Jim Brosnan warming up now to take over for Drott. He'll be pitching to Zimmer, Colfax, and Amaros. I'll give you Brosnan's record this year, but Jerry will tell you a little bit about him before we get back to the ball game. Jim's a pretty good-sized boy, Vinny. 6'4", weighs 215 pounds, and he was with Chicago last year. He won five and lost nine. He was with the Cubs for a brief uh, while in 1954. He had a 1-0 record in the National League. He's been playing mostly in double-A, triple-A, and uh, then in the major leagues for those two shots that we told you about, 1954 and last year with the Cubs. He was in 30 ball games, five wins and nine losses. His lifetime major league record is six and nine. So Jim Brosnan now in to replace Dick Trott. Trott uh, going out with a record of 3-5 and is now behind six to nothing. In two innings plus, six runs, four hits, four strikeouts, and five walks. So Don Zimmer steps in now to face the new big right-hander. Let's get back to play, and here again is Ben. Well, we'll add a new line to the history book on Jim Brosnan. This is his 12th appearance for the Cubs. He started once. He is 0-1 with the league. B-R-O-S-N-A-N, Jim Brosnan. Brooklyn six, Chicago nothing. Nobody out in the third inning. Carl Erskine running for Campanella at second. Charlie Neal had just chased in two runs with a base hit as at first. Don Zimmer struck out in the second inning. Brosnan checks his runners. Now it comes to the plate. Overhand fastball cut on and missed. The ball gets away from Neiman, but not far enough for the runners to advance. On one the count. In the Dodger bullpen, and gee, it could be quite a night. Joe Pignatano is a Brooklyn boy. He has not caught a pitch in the major leagues, and he's very close to it. He appeared as a pinch runner, but he's never been behind the plate. It wouldn't be a great thing to have the boy in the game tonight. If the Dodgers, with this comfortable lead of 6 nothing, might very well decide now to give him a chance. The on one pitch to Don Zimmer, curveball, it's slowly to third. Banks up with it, goes back to Morgan, they get one, on to first in time for the double play, and down to third goes Carl Erskine. So the double play, five to four to three. See, I'll tell you what, you might know the Pignatanos. If you do, maybe his wife taking care of the baby, not watching or listening to the ball game, give her a call. Looks like Joe's gonna break into the major leagues tonight. Sandy Koufax coming up, struck out in the second inning. He's 0 for 11. Two out in the third inning, 6 0 Brooklyn. Carl Erskine now at third base, running for Campanella. Brosnan winds and delivers, and the curveball a little high, ball one. Pretty sure I saw Pignatano putting on the gear. Campanella hit under the heart with a fastball, had to come out. Rube Walker has a couple of stitches in his hand. He could play, but the Dodgers leading 6 0 in the third might let Pignatano catch. Curve is down low, ball two. That'd be real nice. Two balls, no strikes. The 2-0 and pitch to Koufax. He runs up and looks at it. It's in for a strike, 2-1. and one. Boy, Joe's got a little baby boy who might very well put on the gear and go back of the plate. Boy, what a stocky kid. Wow. His dad might get in tonight. Brosnan ready in the 2-1 pitch. Fastball on the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. two down, bottom of the third inning. Brooklyn 6, Chicago nothing. Yes, it's kind of a one-sided game thus far, but you have a couple of things going. Sandy Koufax has struck out six men. He is not allowed a hit. He has not walked anybody. Pignatano might break into the majors, so stay right with us. Fastball is low, ball three. Full count to Sandy. Jim Brosnan in relief of Dick Drott. Tomorrow night will be at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. Don Drysdale and Don Kaiser. The 3 2 pitch to Koufax. Fastball in there. Sandy's caught looking and strikes out for the second time. For the Dodgers in the third inning, they pick up three more runs. There were three hits a home run, a double, and a single. One man left on. 
And one man hit by a pitch, Campanello had to leave. And Joe Pignatano is putting on the gears. So welcome to the club, Joe, and lots of luck. Carl Erskine's stopping to talk to him right now. Well, Pignatano, a Brooklyn boy, finally plants his spikes back a home plate and takes a few warm-up tosses. Let's check with our shape of scoreboard. Milwaukee and the Giants at the end of two and a half innings of play. Milwaukee three and the Giants two. Ray Cohn for Milwaukee. For the Giants, Stu Miller and Kurt Barkley in the third inning. Corey and Aaron have hit home runs. And a roar in the background as Joe is announced to the crowd. Aaron's home run came with a man aboard, his 13th. Willie Mays hit a home run in the first inning with nobody on. 3-2 Braves at the end of two and a half. Philadelphia leading Cincinnati 3-0 at the end of four innings. Pittsburgh leading St. Louis 1-0 at the end of two and a half. Schmidt against Smith. Schmidt against Smith. Hmm. Cincinnati, Philadelphia, as we said, 3-0 fills at the end of four. Lawrence against Haddix. American League, Yankees leading Cleveland 3-1 at the end of two innings. Sturdivant against Daly, relieved by Mossy in the first inning. Boston, Chicago, we have confirmation. Stone against Pierce. Washington, Detroit, probably Clevenger against Mars. Baltimore, Kansas City, probably Lowe's against Morgan. So at the end of three innings of play, Brooklyn six runs, four hits, and no errors. Chicago no runs, no hits, and one error. And we have a Brooklyn battery now, Sandy Koufax and Joe Pignatano. To the fourth inning, and for Schaefer Beer and the play-by-play, -play, here's Jerry Doggett. Thanks, Ben, and hi again, everyone. Bob Speak coming on now for Chicago to face Sandy Koufax. Six strikeouts, one walk, and no base hits off, Sandy. Dodgers six, and the Cubs nothing. First of a three-game series. The middle game will be tomorrow night at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. And the finale back here at Ebbets Field on Thursday night. Pignatano gives a sign, and here's the pitch. Fastball comes low from Koufax. One ball, no strikes on Bob Speak. Speak hitting in the number two spot. Hitting at 243. Ernie Banks on deck, and Lee Walls down in the hole. The windup and the 1-0 pitch. In for a strike. Fastball in this 1-1. One ball, one strike to Bob Speak. The Cubs have had one man on. Speak walked in the first inning. Sandy checks the sign, winds and fires. The pitch is low for a ball, and the count goes two and one. Two balls, one strike. The Dodgers got three in the first and three more in the third off starter Dick Drott, who then was relieved by Jim Brosnan. Strike two with a fastball over the plate at the knees, and it's a 2-2 count. Charlie Neal wide of third in a step or two against the left-hand batter. Speak waiting. Here's the 2-2 pitch. A bouncer foul down the first baseline. Handled in the first base coaching box by Freddie Fitzsimmons. Count holds a 2-2 on Bob Speak. Dodgers home after a long road trip. The Western trip was interrupted by three games here at Ebbets Field against the Giants, and then back they went to Pennsylvania for some more on the road. And now back home for 15 games in 13 days. A couple of big doubleheaders coming on. We will tell you about those a little later. 2-2. Koufax shakes off a sign from Pignatano, gets another one. The windup in the 2-2 pitch. Fastball just missed the outside corner at 3 2. So a full count on Bob Speak. Number 11, left hand batter. Three and two. Kofax takes his sign, the windup, and here's the pitch. High fly ball to right field. Simoli backs up. Waiting now and moves in a step or two and makes the play for the out one away. Speaks guys out high and a right. One up, one down, and here's Ernie Banks coming on. One down, swinging first time. Ernie off to a slow start for him this year, hitting just a 229. He has five home runs and 15 runs batted in. Banks the batter with Walls on deck and Frank Renega to follow. One out, none on, fourth inning. Dodgers six, Chicago Cubs nothing. Cubs in seventh place, just a half game ahead of the Pirates. Trying to stay out of the coal hole. Here's a bounder foul past third. Strike one. Nothing and one to Banks. 
Koufax gets a new one to work with now. Pignatano replaced Campanella, plunked in the ribs, above the ribs, by fastball from Dick Drott. Campy had to retire from the game. Here's the 0-1 pitch by Koufax. Curveball, swung on and missed, strike two. Sandy pulled the string very well that time, changed up, and Banks was fooled. Nothing and two. One out, none on, fourth inning. Sandy ready, the wind-up and pitch. Fastball, got him swinging. Down goes Banks for the second time tonight, and for Koufax, strikeout number seven. So in three and two-thirds innings, Koufax now has chalked up seven strikeouts, which is a better pace than he had when he struck out 13 Cubs out at Wrigley Field. Lee Wells coming on. Popped out his first time. And is hitting 224. Center fielder Lee Walls. Two outs, none on. Fourth inning. Cubs have had just one base runner. Speak who walked in the first inning. Slow curve is up high, and it's ball one. Dodgers six. Cubs nothing. Top of the fourth inning at Everett Field and Schaefer Beer. Happy to send it to you tonight. Hope you enjoy the game. We know you'll enjoy Schaefer. Fastball, strike one. Count evens now, 1-1 one, one on Lee Walls. Walls bluffed the bunt that time, and Charlie Neal came charging in from third. It's Neal, Zimmer, Gilliam, and Hodges on the Dodger infield. The outfield, Amaro, Snyder, and Simoli. Pignatano catching and Koufax pitching. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Up high with a fastball, it's ball two, two and one. Two outs, none on, fourth inning, Chicago at bat. Checks again with Pignatano, delivers. The fastball is low and outside, ball three. Three and one to Lee Walls. Well, a big set coming up over the weekend, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday, a doubleheader. Cincinnati Redlegs coming to town over the weekend. We hope you've got your tickets and plan to be here. That'll be a big set. Three-one pitch on the way. Ball four, up high, walked him. So Walls is on. That's walk number two given up by Sandy Koufax. Second base runner for Chicago and Frank Renega coming on. Two outs, one on. Renega the batter. Struck out first time. Hitting 333. Koufax now working out of the stretch for the second time tonight. Takes off a sign, gets a new one. Two outs, one on. Cubs batting. Pitch. Fastball for a strike on the outside corner, knee high. 0 and 1 to Frank Grenega. E R N A G A. Frank brought up just after the season open from Portland. Nothing in one. Pitch. Curveball high over the bill of the captain. It's ball one. Even count now. One ball, one strike. One and one. Ball's playing it close to the bag at first. Hodges holding him on. Curveball for strike two. Ernega had a notion, checked his swing, and it cost him. One ball, two strikes. The Cubs right fielder, Frank Ernega. Should he get on, Dale Long is due next. One and two count. Koufax checks again, delivers. A wild pitch got by Pignatano back to the wire and down to second base goes Wall. Makes his turn there and holds on as Pignatano comes back to the screen to retrieve. A high one. And it's a wild pitch charged against Sandy Koufax. Pignatano just able to get a tip of the glove on it and couldn't slow it down. So the Cubs have a man at second with two out. Walls on there and Ernega has a 2-2 count. Turn two on the batter. Two outs and a man on at second. Dodgers six. Cubs nothing. Top of the fourth. Now the check by Koufax, and here's his pitch. Fastball high again, ball three. 
So the count to Ornega, full, 3-2. off second. Kofax ready. 3-2 count. Here's the pitch. Got him swinging. Down he goes. Side retired. For Kofax, strikeout number eight in four innings. So he's been rolling along here with an average of two per inning. Side out in the fourth inning for the Cubs. No runs. No hits. No errors. And they left one man on. So at the end of three and a half innings to play, it's the Dodgers six, Chicago Cubs nothing. And now here's Ben. Well, isn't it a fact, friends, as many times as your favorite player comes through in the clutch, you always get a kick out of it. Does your heart good every time. Well, let me tell you about something else that'll do your heart good every single time, and I'm talking about a tall, cool glass of Schaefer beer. Yes, sir, Schaefer is beer at its best in any man's league. It's got to be, because Schaefer is brewed for enjoyment, brewed to give you all the zesty, satisfying flavor you want but don't always find. The Schaefer folks select rich barley malt, tangy hops, and other fine natural ingredients. Then they add their own special ingredient, the brewing skill that comes from 115 years of experience. So for real enjoyment, how about having a tall, foaming glass of Schaefer beer right about now, and you'll agree about Schaefer and it's real beer. Skoll, toast, here's mud in your eyes. to the fourth inning. Brooklyn, six runs, four hits, and no errors. But another story is building up now, for the Cubs have been at bat for four innings, and Koufax is not allowed a hit, and has struck out eight. So, you stay right where you be, and listen to Jerry. Okay, Vinny, top of the fourth inning, it'll be Sandy Amaros, Jim Gilliam, and Duke Snyder coming on. Amaros has walked and popped out. Jim Brosnan came on to relieve starter Dick Drought in the third and got Zimmer to bounce in the double play and struck out Koufax, so he quieted the noise. Dodgers three in the first and three in the third. So here we go now, the last half of the fourth inning. Jim Brosnan warming up with catcher Cal Neiman. And now Amaro steps in and we're ready to go. Last of the fourth inning, Brosnan in the windup, and here's the pitch to Sandy. Curveball drops in for a strike. Sandy hitting 314. Gilliam on deck and then Snyder to follow. Strike one count. Big Jim delivers. Up high, ball one. Count evens, 1-1 one, one to Amarose. The Chicago defense moves around to the right to play Amarose to pull. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Curve again, high, outside, ball two, turned one. Banks is wide of third and in a step or two. Shortstop Jack Luttrell shading second just a bit. Morgan and Long deep on the right side, and the outfield moved around a bit to the right to play against Sandy. 2-1 pitch. Down it comes. Curve the 10 for a strike at the knees, and it's 2-2 two -two to Amrose. Here's the pitch. A bouncer off to the right side. Coming on fast forward is Morgan. His play to first is in time and it's one away. Amaros rolls out second to first. So we have one up, one down, and on coming is Junior Gilliam. Walk, scored a run, and grounded out. At the end of four and a half innings, Philadelphia three, Cincinnati nothing. Milwaukee now has taken the lead on the Giants at the end of four and a half, four to three. Gilliam hitting 250. Drosnan, the big right hitter, checks his sign with catcher Cal Neiman. Here's the windup and pitch. Fastball skips from the dirt at the plate, ball one. Banks in a bit closer now than he was on Amaro, still wide of the bag. Guarding against the bunt possibility from Junior. Here's the windup and the pitch. And Junior ran up to butt it, let it go, and it cost him for a strike. 1-1. One, one. 
to Gilliam. The windup and pitch. Curveball in for a strike on the inside corner. Gilliam taking and it's one and two. One out, none on, last of the fourth. Dodgers six, Cubs nothing. First of a three-game series opening a long home stand for Brooklyn. Fastball is high and outside. Ball two. Two-two now. Two to Gilliam. One out, none on. The wind up in the pitch. Curveball bounced foul down the right field line all the way to the Brooklyn bullpen. And the count to Gilliam holds at two and two as Brosnan gets a new one now. Rubs it up. pitch on the way. The roller hits the wide of first base. Over forward goes Morgan. Makes his plate along in time and it's two gone. Gilliam rolls out as did Amaro. Second to first. Two up and two down and here comes Snyder. Here's a further report on Campanella. Examined by the team physician Dr. Kubiak and uh, reported that he was uh, okay. The doc examined his ribs, his heart, said everything's all right. Had the wind knocked out of him, and it's going to be a little sore, but should be able to play by tomorrow. So a good report on Campy. Plunked in the ribs earlier by a big drop fastball. Pitch to Snyder on the inside corner for a call strike. Snyder has walked to the home run. He's one for one and has scored twice, hitting 250. Oh, one count. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside, ball one. One ball, one strike on Duke Snyder. Gino Simoli on deck. Two out, fourth inning. Dodgers six, Cubs nothing. Rosman into the windup, and down it comes. Duke takes a fastball at the knees for a strike two, and it's one and two. One ball, two strikes. Rosden has, re has faced four batters, retired them all. He got the Zimmer with two on and got him to hit the double play, then struck out Koufax in the third. Got Ambrose and Gilliam on rollers here. Snyder swings a hot one past first foul, and the count stays at one and two. The Pirates lead the Cardinals one to nothing at the end of two and a half innings of play. Yankees six. Cleveland won through three innings of play at Cleveland tonight. One and two, the count to Duke Snyder. Two outs, none on. Dodgers six, Cubs nothing. Brosnan into the windup, and down it comes. Curveball high, and it's ball two. Even count now to Duke, two and two. Balls, two strikes. Big Jim winds and fires to Duke. Swings and chops it foul, rolling back behind the plate into the Dodger dugout. So the count holds at 2 2. Tomorrow night, these same clubs play at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City and then back again to Ebbets Field on Thursday. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday a doubleheader with Cincinnati here at Ebbets Field. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three. Snyder going for a slow curve is out on strike. For Brosnan, strikeout number two. And that is the 14th strikeout in the ball game. Pilots, man your plane. 
Flying off is okay for pilots, but don't you go flying off in all directions when it comes to buying a car. No, sir. Go to Rose Oldsmobile, the oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer in the Capital District. There must be a reason why so many people keep coming back to buy from Rose year after year. Over 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. Yes, one reason. Rose is the most economical place to buy your car. You get a good deal from Rose Oldsmobile. Their modern shop is so completely equipped with late modern factory approved equipment for continuing warranty work that ensures satisfaction. Another reason to buy from Rose Oldsmobile. Only the finest and late model cars are traded in on new Oldsmobiles, and Rose offers their wonderful selection of carefully driven cars for your inspection. So, when it comes to buying a car, come to Rose Oldsmobile, satisfying customers at the same location for 30 years. That's Rose Oldsmobile, Corner Central and Banning, the Capital District's oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer. Pick up and see the Dodgers of Jersey City. coming on to bat in the fifth inning now against Sandy Koufax. Dale Long, first batter up, struck out first time up, and is hitting 241. Left-hand batter against Koufax, and now has posted eight strikeouts. Cub pitching has recorded six so far. Fastball comes in low to Long, and it's ball one. One ball, no strikes, fifth inning. Dodgers six, and the Cubs nothing. Long, Neiman, and Luttrell, first three do up. We have some bullpen activity now for the Cubs, indicating the possibility of a pinch hit if we get down to the pitcher spot. Ball two, down to Long, and it's 2-0 now. 2-0 count, Long waiting. In the second inning, Koufax struck out the side. Here's a fastball to Long. He takes for a strike, and it's 2-1. Two, and one. two balls, one strike. Top of the fifth. Long wearing number 27 on the back of the gray uniform. 2-1 pitch. Low for a ball three. Three and one. Chicago's had two base runners both on walks off Koufax. So Sandy's been mowing them down. Starts to pump and holds up. Gets a new sign from Joe Pignatano. Here's the windup and the 3-1 pitch. Inside, ball four, and Long is on to start the fifth. Walk number three off Koufax. And it brings on Cal Neiman. He struck out his first time up. Neiman is hitting 265. Right-hand batter. Pretty good-sized boy, Cal Neiman. One on, none out. Fifth inning, Dodgers six, Cubs nothing. Joe Pignatano down to give a sign. And Koufax now working out of a stretch for the third time tonight. His curve is low for a ball, and it's one ball, no strikes. In case you joined us late, Brooklyn got three in the first off starter Dick Drott, and then got three more in the third to drive him to cover. Here's the pitch. Strike called on a fastball at the letters, and it's one and one. Cal Neiman hitting in the number seven spot. The shortstop, Jack Luttrell, do up next. And then the pitcher spot, Jim Brosnan. Koufax stretches again. The pitch up high with a fastball, and it's ball two. Two and one. Two balls, one strike, one on, then out. Chicago batting in the fifth. Cubs leading uh, the... Dodgers leading the Cubs 6 0. A swing and a miss on a fastball. Strike two. Count evens at two and two. Tom Poholsky in the bullpen for the Cubs. Big right hander. Back ready, 2-2 pitch to the plate. Fly ball to center field. Snyder coming on for it. Samoli from right center comes in, and Snyder makes the call, grabs it for the out. So Neiman skies out to Snyder in short right center. One away, and here's Jack Luttrell, the shortstop. Luttrell is hitting at 138. One out, and one on. 
Tano on the mound talking to Koufax, so while he's out there talking, let's duck in a station break. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Ted Brown and the Redhead keep you entertained with chatter, music, news, and weather every morning. Dial 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodgers games and write to WOKO for the complete Dodgers schedule of games at home and away. Yours free for the asking. Be sure to give your name and address right baseball WOKO Albany, New York. the left field. Sandy Ambrose moving in and coming toward the lineup, but he's there waiting and makes his play for the out two away. Latrell skies to left, and Jim Brosnan do up. We'll see if he's going to bat. Goes to get a helmet, so it looks like he's going to come on. Two outs, one on. Long started the inning with a walk. And Brosnan now will be the hitter. Goes to the bat rack to pick one out, getting a batting helmet right now. Here he comes. Dodgers six runs on four hits. The Cubs no runs on no hits. Chicago with one error, a throwing error by Cal Neiman in the first inning that got in the first run of the ball game. So here's Brosnan up now with two outs and one on. Top of the fifth. Sandy delivers. The fastball is in for a strike. Koufax has recorded at least one strikeout in every inning up to now. He got two in the first, three in the second, one in the third, and two in the fourth. Total of eight. Fastball outside, ball one. Count evens to Brosnan, one and one. Joe Pignatana doing the catching. Campanella plunked in the ribs in the third inning. Had to leave the ball game, but the doctor reports that he's okay. Just going to be a little sore for a day or so. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Foul back, straight back to the wire. Strike two. One and two to pitcher Jim Brosnan. Day along, wandering around off first. I just kind of ignoring him. Now moves up. Hold him on. One and two. Here's the pitch. Curveball high, and it's ball two. Even count now, two two. Sandy Koufax ready again. Checks the two two pitch. Strike three call on the outside corner. So Sandy keeps the string going and now has nine strikeouts in five innings. For the Cubs, in the top of the fifth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on. So at the end of four and a half innings of play, the score, the Dodgers six, Chicago nothing. And now, friends, a word from Al Helfer. For well, some time or other, we've all watched the third base coach flashing signs. But did you ever watch old Jerry Doggett here flashing his signs? Ah, uh, he's got his hand held out, palm up. Well, that means I uh, left my luckies at home. Got a mooch one. A beaming smile, uh-huh. Well, that's Jerry's sign that he's got his lucky and he's enjoying it right now. What else? Oh, no. A lucky is all fine tobacco. There couldn't be anything else. Naturally good tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Well, say, what's he signaling now? Oh, I got it, Jerry. Let's all light up our lucky. Oh, that's a good idea. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. You'll say a lucky's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. into the last half of any number five at Ebbets Field. Gino Simoli will be the first run-up, then comes Hodges, and then comes Pignatano. You all set, Jerry? 
Ready to go, Al. That lucky fired and going, huh? Got it going. Uh, oh, hold it just a minute, and i got to put a match to it. Then we'll be ready to roll. Tamoli has struck out and walked and scored. Gino hitting at 343. On the mound, big Jim Brosnan. Into the windup, and the pitch comes to Tamoli. Gino checked up and took it low for a ball. one nothing. Ready. What are you going to do with the other one on the other side? You got two of them lit now. Oh, I didn't smoke them two at a time. <laughs> two, three, five, or six. You can't improve on the flavor, though. Boy, they're all <laughs> fine. The best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Second. Here's a little pitch to Gino. Again, he checks, and it's ball two. Curve outside. Two balls, no strike. Dodger six, Cubs nothing, bottom of the fifth. Tamoli with a hot bat, 432 average in his last 11 ball game. Here's the pitch. Hot foul back of the plate. Neiman turns and watches it sail in the upper deck, and it's 2 1. Two balls, one strike to Gino Tamoli, batting in the cleanup spot. ready. Here's the pitch. Curve ball in high and on the letters, ball three. Three and one to Gino. Here's the pitch. Bringing a drive to left field, belted. Back third goes the left fielder, Speak, and makes the grab in front of the wall. Gino gave it a ride deep to left field, but Speak was there to make the play. So Tamoli lines left, one away, and on comes Hodges. Gill has walked and doubled, has scored twice. Ready now, pitches to Hodges. Fastball on the inside corner, strike one. Strike one count. The wind up in the pitch. Low for ball, and the count goes one and one. Last of the fifth inning, we have one out. Dodgers batting, leading six to nothing over Chicago. First of a 15-game homestand. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Fly ball to deep center field. Backboard goes well, way back, 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 and forget it. It's a home run for Hodges. hit one far and deep into the lower stands in left center field a long way away and it's the seventh of the year and for the veterans at the VA hospital Montrose New York another thousand free luckies along with that home run here's Joe Pignatano up for his first at bat Joe got in the ball game in the third and now I guess we'll take a look at major league pitching last year at St. Paul Joe hit 295 ball one to him Swings on a curve and it's strike one, one and one. So far in our ball game tonight, we've sent along 3,000 luckies to the veterans at Montrose Hospital. We have a quota of 34,000 and now have received 29 of the 34,000 quota. Curveball bites in the dirt and bounces away from Neiman and to take the tunnel, it's ball two and strike one. The Dodgers seven. And the Cubs nothing. Gill's been on a real binge here lately. Two homers, two doubles, two walks in his last six times to the plate. That's pretty good. Four for four, and he's been on base six times. Joe takes a strike at the knees, and it's 2-2 to Pignatano. Two 
one two as Brosnan goes into the windup and here's his pitch. A swing and a drive to right field. Base hit for Pignatano. One big bounce in front of Renega. So Joe is on, slamming one to right over the head of second baseman Bobby Morgan. And a nice round of applause for the Brooklyn catcher. Joe Pignatano on with a single. And here comes Charlie Neal. Charlie struck out and singled to drive in a pair. So he's one for two, hitting at 274. The home run by Hodges was the first one allowed by Brosnan. In fact, was the first base runner. Big Jim checks first. Pignatano leads off, and here's the pitch to Neal. Down low, ball one. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. One out, one on, Dodgers seven, Cubs nothing. Philadelphia three, Cincinnati nothing to six and a half. Fastball outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Tignatano on first. Charlie Neal waiting. Don Zimmer on deck. Infield up a step or two. Double play depth. Fastball low and it's ball free to Neal. Three zero. The count to Charlie Neal. Here's the look and the pitch. Ball four, high and inside. Bends him back, and Neal's on with a walk. Off Brosnan, walk number one, and off Chicago pitching. The Dodgers have now received five free passes, or rather six. Five off Drott and one off Brosnan. Here's Dan Zimmer up now, called out on strikes and wrapped into a double play, hitting 226. Pignatano on second, and Neal on at first. One out. Here's the pitch. Curveball, low and away. Ball one. Dodgers three in the first, three in the third, and one now in the fifth with two on and one out. So the Dodgers have been using the odd innings tonight to get their runs. Rosman ready, checks and delivers. Foul ball straight back, and it's one and one to Zimmer. Sandy Koufax do up next, but Sandy Amaros comes out in the on-deck circle. At the end of six, the Giants five, Milwaukee four. The end of six and a half, Philadelphia three, and Cincinnati nothing. Here's the pitch to Zimmer. High and outside, ball two, two and one. Harvey Haddock's doing the work for Philadelphia. And hanging goose eggs on the red legs up to now. Two on count. Zimmer waiting. Two on. Pignatano and Neal at second and first. Brosnan delivers. Zim swings a high pop fly into center field. Coming on for it is Walls and cutting in from right is Ornega. Walls calls and almost overran the ball, stopped and leaned back to make the grab. So Zimmer out on a pop fly in the center field. Two away now, Sandy Koufax goes to the bat rack to get a helmet and a bat. And up he comes. Nice hand for Sandy, who through five innings has allowed no runs and no hits to Chicago and just three base runners while striking out nine. Sandy having quite an evening so far. Colfax swings left. Waiting now for Brosnan to get set. Two on, two out. Here's the pitch. Foul ball, straight back, strike one. Got to give Sandy a cheer as he got a piece of the ball. Sandy is 0 for 12. Tonight he has struck out twice, and I think that he struck out now 10 out of 12 times. Is that about right, Alan? Eight out of eight out of 12. Here's the pitch. Curve ball in tight, and it's ball one. One and one to Colfax. Dodgers seven, Cubs nothing, last of the fifth inning. 
Two outs, two on. Jim Brosnan, the second Chicago hurler, replaced Dick Drott in the third. The 1 1 pitch. A lantern hit right to the second baseman, Morgan, who makes the grab. And here's what happened on the play Morgan had come over to bluff uh, the runner, Pignatano, and he was going back as Brosnan pitched. Had he not been over there, the ball would have gone through the middle for a base hit for Colfax. So Sandy can say that he was robbed. If it's value you want, then it's value you'll get when you trade at Rose Oldsmobile. Take a tip from a friend that you'll never regret. If you're looking for a really good used car, Rose Oldsmobile, the Capital District's oldest franchised Oldsmobile dealer, is the place to go. If you've ever purchased any car anywhere, then you know there's more to buying a car than just price. You want to be sure the deal you make is the best deal for you. And you want to be sure the dealer stands behind it. You can be sure when you deal with Rose Oldsmobile at the corner of Central and Manning in Albany. Rose Oldsmobile sells the best late model used cars, good reliable used cars traded on brand new Oldsmobiles. And these late model beauties are priced right. So when you think of value in used cars, think of price. Think of the deal you can make. Think of the firm's reputation. When you think of value in these terms, you're sure to think of Rose Oldsmobile, corner of Central and Manning in Albany. You'll never, 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 never get better value. And for the next four purchasers of the yearbook, the same gift, a pair of box seats. That's ten box seats in all, waiting for five lucky purchasers of the Dodger yearbook. That Dodger yearbook, box 119, Brooklyn 1, New York. Maybe you'll be the recipient of a pair of box seats. Order your book right away. Then of the sixth inning we go, Jerry. That's Morgan up there. How about it? Ready to go. Sandy Koufax into the windup, and here's his pitch. Fastball for a strike in at the knees, and it's nothing in one. Koufax with nine strikeouts has walked three and allowed no runs and no hits to the Cubs. Top of the sixth inning. Bobby Morgan, the leadoff man, takes the curveball inside, and it's ball one. Even count now, one and one. Joe Pignatano behind the plate, down to give a sign. Charlie Neal edging in at third just in case Morgan should think about running. The 1-1 pitch. Bouncer foul past third and off the box seat running. Scramble for it. The man fell out of the stands going after that one. One ball, two strikes on Bobby Morgan. He fell out of the stands to get the ball and the park policeman come down to retrieve it. You can't come on the field to get him. You got to stay in the stands. When you fall out of there, that's too bad. Of course, that draws a round of booze. The one-two pitch by Kofak. Foul ball, right straight back. And it's still one and two. Sandy Kofak, leading the league in strikeouts. Really blazing them in. Nine in five innings so far tonight. At the end of seven, the Phillies three, Cincinnati nothing. Milwaukee tied it up on the Giants with one in the seventh. 5-5, five, five, top of the seventh. Curveball just missed inside, and it's ball two. Two and two to Morgan. Speak is on deck with Ernie Banks down in the hole. Pitch is low for a ball, and the count goes three and two now. Full count to Bobby Morgan. In the fifth inning, Koufax walked the first batter long, but then got the side out, and Long died at first. 3-2 pitch on the way. Ball four. Low and inside, he walked him. So from Koufax, walk number four. And again, leadoff man is on, and Bob Speak comes on. He walked and flat out in two tries, none for one.
pitch comes down to speak low for ball, and it's one nothing. Dodger seven, Cubs nothing. We're in the sixth inning. Sandy Koufax checks his runner, checks his sign now, and goes out of a stretch. Delivers to speak. Strike called with a curve on the corner, and it's one and one. Brooklyn got three in the first, three in the third, and one in the fifth. Charlie Neal playing it in the third with a left-hand batter up there. Zimmer and Gilliam halfway and double played up. Hodges holding the runner on, now backs off. Here's the pitch. Pop up around the plate foul. Back for it comes Pignatano. Back to the wire, but it's up in the screen out of play. So it's a ball and two strike camp now to Bob Speak. Joe Pignatano in the ball game. Campanella plunked in the chest by pitch by Dick Drott in the third had to leave the ball game. Rube Walker has a couple of stitches in his right hand, so Pignatano gets into his first major league ball game here tonight. The Brooklyn boy handling the slants of Sandy Koufax giving the Dodgers an all-Brooklyn battery for the first time in, I guess, a long time. Here's the one-two pitch. Curve up high for ball two. Two and two. Actually, the second game that Joe's been in, but the first game that he's caught, he was in as a pinch runner earlier. Two-two, Koufax eyes Morgan at first base, now delivers to the plate. Ball three, the fastball just inside. So again, a full count here on Bob Speak. Koufax working away. He's walked four and struck out nine. Now Pignatano goes out to have a talk. Joe is rated a very capable receiver. And last year, he had a good batting average at St. Paul in 81 games. He hit 295. His peak year was in 1953 at Asheville, North Carolina. He hit 316. Three and two. Sandy Koufax out of a stretch. Here's the pitch to speak. A drive to right field. That one's tagged. That one is well hit. And over the wall, a home run for Bob Speak. And two runs score for Chicago in the first hit of the ball game off Sandy Koufax. As Bob Speak hit a low fastball on the 3-2 pitch and gave it a golf shot over the screen in right field out into Bedford Avenue. So the Cubs pick up a pair and down the drain goes the no-hitter and also the shutout. Two runs on one hit for Chicago, a home run to Bob Speak. Ernie Banks coming on, takes low for a ball. Nobody out, two in, and it's a seven to two ball game. And for the home run, Bob Speak sends along a thousand free luckies to the veterans at Montrose Hospital, Montrose, New York. One ball, no strike. The curve ball to Banks is inside, ball two. Sandy was rolling along with pretty good control. He had uh, a walk in the first. In the fourth, the fifth, and now in the sixth. But he got behind. Had to come in with one to speak on a full count. Here's a strike to Banks, and it's two and one. Ernie Banks at that has struck out twice. Koufax checks the sign from Pignatano. The two-one pitch. High fly to center field. Snyder drifting in. Waits, pounds his glove, comes on in, and he's got it for the out. One away. So Banks out on a fly ball to center, and here's Lee Walls. Walls has popped out and walked. Speak and Walls are the only batters that have not gone down swinging before Koufax tonight. Sandy has picked up two on Ernie Banks and Frank Ernega. One on all the others except Speak and Walls. One out, none on. Here's his pitch. Fastball is outside, ball one. Walls hitting at 224. Walls and Long, of course, came to the Cubs in the deal that sent uh, Baker and uh, Fondy to Pittsburgh. And right now, it appears that the Pirates got the better of it, especially since D. Fondy is leading the league in batting with a 367 average. 
Long is hitting 241 and Walls hitting 224. Here's the pitch. Fastball is in for the strike and it's one and one. Oddly enough, although the Pirates are last in the league, they have three among the top ten hitters. Bondi, Grote, and Thomas. 1-1 one, one pitch. High and inside. Ball two. Go back to the curveball. Lost control of it. Two balls, one strike. Sixth inning. The Cubs have two in, and it's 7-2. to two, Dodgers lead. Neal playing shallow at third against Walls, who might bunt. Ground ball to the left side. Zimmer goes over towards second. Plays it across. In time for the out. Two away. And up to this point, with two out in the sixth inning, Koufax has chalked up at least one strikeout per inning. But now he comes again to an inning with two outs, needing to get one to keep the string alive. The play by Zimmer is the first assist of the ball game. All of the other putouts, fly balls, or strikeouts. First assist. There's a fastball for a strike, so we go along for five and two-thirds innings before we get the first ground ball, actually. The first assist. Two outs, strike one count on Frank Renega, who struck out twice. Curve is low for ball, and the count is 1-1. One, one. Two outs, none on. In the inning, Morgan walked and Speak had a line drive over the screen and right for a home run. Lucky strike sending it all to you tonight from Ebbets Field. Fastball outside, ball two. Two and one now to Ornega. Frank hitting 310. Came into tonight's game at 353, but he's only been up there six times. Uh, 17 times with six hits. Now it's six for 19. And looks at a fastball low again, ball three. So it's 3 1 to Frank Ornega. into the windup and here's his pitch. Strike two on the outside corner. It's three and two. Ignatano passes it out and Koufax winds and fires. Strike three. Down he goes and that's number ten for Sandy Koufax and he still has one, at least one an inning. The third time for Arnega to side out in the sixth. For the Cubs, two runs, one hit, no errors, and they left none on. So at the end of the top of the sixth inning, the score, the Dodgers seven, Chicago two. Al, you ready? Yes, sir. Now for a quick trip to the captain's corner. Captain Pee Wee, you're up. So far this season, the one thing which has impressed me mostly is the balance of the league. All the clubs are tough now. Several years ago, we never had too much trouble with Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, or Chicago. Now, every team in the league seems to play like pennant contenders against us. The Giants may not be high in the standings, but when they play us, they really get up for the games. I would say the National League this season is the best balance I've ever seen it. It should make for great fan appeal. Well spoken, Captain Reese. Got a suggestion for you before we focus back on the game. Fans, light up a lucky and enjoy the genuine pleasure of a genuine cigarette. You'll say a Lucky's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Now to the last half of inning number six. First man up will be Sandy Amarose, then we'll have Gilliam and Snyder. Now have a 7-2 ball game in favor of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Sandy Koufax, despite the fact he's given up two runs, is still breezing. Going right along here, firing that fastball. He's stuffing it in, isn't he, Jerry? He's really pointed out. Ten strikeouts in the ball game through six innings. Amaros waits none for two tonight. Grosman delivers a high curve, ball one. Sandy hitting at 308 came into tonight's game at 320. Popped out, walked, and grounded out. The Dodgers have six base hits, good for seven runs. The Cubs have one hit, good for two runs. A curve is in for a strike, and it's 1-1 to Amaros. One, 
to wind up and pitch. Curveball belted in the center field. Walls now turns and drifts back for it. Back, back, back near the track. He's got it for the out. Amro skying deep to center for the first out in the inning. One up, one down, and here's Gilliam. Junior has walked, grounded out twice. Gilliam hitting at 249, none for two tonight. Dodgers seven, Cubs two, last of the sixth inning. Rosman delivers. Gilliam swings and hits one in the hole to left field for a base hit. Junior slashing one through there between the shortstop Latrell and third baseman Ernie Banks. So he's on with a single hit number seven for the Dodgers, and on coming will be Duke Snyder. And as soon as we see what happens to Snyder, we'll run in a station break for you. One on, one out. Snyder has walked at a home run and struck out. Duke hitting at 248. One for two tonight. He's picked up three points this evening with a home run. Scored two runs. One on, one out. Rosman, the big right-hander, second Chicago pitcher of the night. Here's the pitch. Fastball for a strike at the knees to Snyder. Nothing and one. Gino Simoli on deck and Gil Hodges down in the hole. Strike one count. Duke waiting. Gilliam off first. Here's the pitch. Foul ball ripped straight back and it's strike two to Duke. 0 oh and 2. Nothing in two count to Snyder. Gilliam off first, one out. Brosnan out of a stretch delivers to Duke. Curve in the dirt, bounces by Neiman. Down to second goes Gilliam, makes a big turn there, and now goes to third. The throw to Banks is in time. Gilliam out, trying to go to third on a wild pitch. The ball came back to the backstop, and Neiman had a little trouble grabbing it, finally picked it up and fired the Banks for the out. So if you're scoring, it'll be Gilliam the second on a wild pitch, and out going to third, two to five. Count the center, ball one and two strikes. Gilliam out. Jim uh, hesitated just a moment before deciding to go on, and that's uh, split second cost him. Out of third, as Neiman made a perfect peg down the bank. So two outs now. No base runner. Snyder waiting. Ball one, strike two. The windup and the one-two pitch. Curve outside for ball and the count 2 2 now on Snyder. <laughs> two and two to Duke. Dodgers seven, Cubs two, last of the six. The wind up and pitch. Fastball, high outside, ball three. Tomorrow night at uh, Jersey City, it'll be Don Drysdale for the Dodgers against Don Kaiser for the Cubs. Don Newcomb due to pitch back at Ebbets Field on Thursday against Chicago. Sal Magley was due to start tonight, but they jammed the thumb in the outfield two days ago at Philadelphia. There's a belt to right, foul, wow. Snyder hit that one over the roof, down in the right field corner. Way out of here. He got a little out in front of the changeup and really belted it. Three and two to Snyder. Two outs, none on, sixth inning. Here's the windup and down it comes. Foul ball on the ground, back of the plate. Count holes to do, three and two. Southpaw umpire Tom Gorman whips one out to the mound to Brosnan. Dodgers seven, Chicago two, two outs, sixth inning, none on. They have a real shift on for Snyder. Second baseman Morgan playing a step or two back on the grass. And shortstop Luttrell is nearly behind second. Banks with the left side of the infield himself. Ball four, low, and Snyder is on with a walk. 
Walk number two given up, and while Samoli comes on, let's duck in a station break. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodgers games and write to WOKO for the complete Dodgers schedule of games at home and away. Yours free for the asking. Be sure to give your name and address. Write Baseball WOKO, Albany, New York. Gino Simoli winning. None for two tonight. Struck out, walk, and slide to left. The pitch to him. Fastball. Low and outside. Ball one. Snyder on with a walk. The Dodgers now have received seven uh, walks. Colfax for the Dodgers has given up four to the Cubs. There have been 16 strikeouts. Ten by Colfax. Four by Drott and two by Brosnan. There have just been eight hits in the game and nine runs. Here's the pitch. Fouled away as Gino tried to hold his swing. The ball hit the underside of the bat and bounced back to the Cub dugout. One and one to Simoli. Hodges on deck and Pignatano to follow. Two outs in the sixth. Dodgers seven, Cubs two. One and one. Here's the look. Here's the pitch. A bouncer wide of third. Banks makes the play on a short hop. In the second for the fourth there on Snyder, and the side is retired. So for the Dodgers in the sixth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and they left one on. And at the end of six, the score, Brooklyn 7, Chicago 2. Well, we have a lots of activity going on in the major leagues tonight, so here's Al with the lucky strike scoreboard. Al? All right, Jerry, Milwaukee and the Giants at the end of six and a half innings to play the Giants at bat in the last half of the seventh inning. It is Milwaukee 5, and the New York Giants have 5. Crone started for Milwaukee. Trowbridge came on in the seventh. Well, the Giants, Miller began it, and Kirk Barkley relieved him in the third. Torrey, Aaron, and Swatsky have all hit home runs for Milwaukee. Aaron's 13th, Swatsky's first, Torrey's second. Mays and Shane Deans have connected for the distance for the Giants. Mays ninth, Shane Deans fifth. At the end of six and a half innings, tied at five and five. Cincinnati, Philadelphia at the end of eight. It is three to one. Philadelphia over Cincinnati. Lawrence started for the Reds. Fowler, his relief in the sixth, and Tom Acker took over in the eighth inning. Harvey Haddock pitching this ball game for Philadelphia. St. Louis and Pittsburgh at the end of five. It is four to three. St. Louis leading Pittsburgh. Schmidt and Merritt so far for St. Louis. Smith and Swanson going for Pittsburgh. Musial, a home run in the fourth with one on for St. Louis. The Yankees Cleveland at the end of six innings. It is six to four in favor of the Yankees over Cleveland. Sturdivant relieved by Grimm in the sixth. Daly, Mossy in the first for Cleveland. At the end of four and a half, no score between Boston and Chicago. At the end of two, Washington won, Detroit won, and the starting pitches have just been announced. Baltimore has Lowe's going, Kansas City, Tom Morgan. Well, that's everything, Jerry. Okay, Al, back to play. First pitch down the day along is strike one. Andy Koufax with ten strikeouts in six innings, working now on Long, who has struck out and walked. One hit off Koufax, a home run to Bob Speak with one on in the sixth inning. Long, big left-hand batter, hitting 241. Change up is inside and it's ball one. One and one count. Koufax struck out two in the first, three in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, one in the fifth, and one in the sixth. Long swings a high pop fly around the plate. Takes the tunnel off of the mat. Moves back about four steps. Wait. He's got it. One away. Long fouls out straight up in the air to Joe Pignatano. Foul ball to Pignatano right oh, about four steps back of the plate. So one away, and here's Cal Lehman coming on, struck out and flat out. Lehman none for two, hitting 263. Backs into the windup, and here's his pitch. Fastball for a strike on the outside corner. 0 and 1. One down in the seventh inning. And the Cubs have bullpen activity again here in the top of the seventh. A swing and a miss on a good curveball in the waters, and it's strike two. Oh, 
two on Cal Neiman. Hofax winds and fires. Curve at the knees for a ball, and it's one and two. One ball, two strikes. The wind up and pitch. Strike three called at the outside corner. Strike out number 11 for Kofax. And for Cal Lehman, that's twice. On the year now for Sandy, that's 58 strikeouts. Two down on the shortstop, Jack Luttrell coming on. He struck out and flat out. Ball one down to Luttrell. Koufax winds and fires. The fastball is low for ball two. Tom Paholsky busy in the bullpen for Chicago. Brosnan is due up next. So if uh, Luttrell gets on, we're apt to see a pinch batter for the Cubs. 1-1 one, one count to Luttrell. Koufax winds and fires. Strike called, and it's 1-2. and two. Luttrell taking a curveball at the knees. One ball, two strikes, two outs, and on. Dodgers 7, Cubs 2, top of the 7th. Here's the pitch. A bouncer hit the third. Neal backs up near the line. Long throw is in time for the out to retire the side. So it's three up and three down for Chicago in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. So at the end of six and a half innings of play, the score, the Dodgers seven, the Cubs two. Well, Al, everybody's standing up for the seventh inning stretch. What do you got to say? Oh, I've got this to say. It's been quite a game. But now, here comes the seventh inning stretch. Wonder what that Dodger fan down there is thinking about, Jer? Shh. Let's steal a listen, huh? That time again, the seventh inning. Oh, it's a nice time to ball game. A stand. And stretch. And kind of look around the ballpark. See a few things you haven't noticed during the first part of the game. <laughs> Can sure tell the home fans from the visitors. Spot the lucky fans, too. No wonder they call it the Lucky Seventh. A lot of lucky smokers. Can't think of a better light-up time. Mm, boy, that tastes good. Light up a Lucky yourself. You know, they say, they say Lucky's taste better. Tell you what you'll say. You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Goodings as the with a little hand clapping music. Let's take a look up at the scoreboard and see uh, how things stand. For Brooklyn, seven runs, seven hits, no errors. And for Chicago, two runs, one hit. They have committed one error. We go to the last of the seventh inning. It's Hodges coming up to the plate now and stepping right back up. A lucky strike, Gary Duck. Okay, Al Hodges had a real good night so far. Walk, doubled, and a home run. Gill's average has moved from 344 to 352, and he's been on base six times in a row, two doubles, two home runs, and two walks. Takes a curve on the inside corner for a strike. At the end of eight, Philadelphia three, Cincinnati one. And at the end of seven, the Giants six, Milwaukee five. 0-1 oh, count, here's the pitch by Brosnan. Curve low, and it's ball one. One ball, one strike to Hodges. Jim Brosnan checks the sign. Here's the 1-1 offering. Outside, ball two, two and one. Roger Craig and Don Besson now in the bullpen for the Dodgers, just in case. Koufax has struck out 11. And the Cubs will have two more turns of bat. The 2-1 pitch to Gill. A half swing, and Gill couldn't check it in time. Strike two. 2-2. Two -two. 
ball in the strike zone anyway, so it's a 2 2 count to Hodges. Boy, this National League race is really something, isn't it? A real dog fight. Hodges swings a ground ball to the left side. Shortstop a trail over. Up with it. Played a first in time, and it's one gone. So they finally stop Hodges. After getting on six times, Gill grounds out. Joe Pignatano coming on now, batting 1,000, if you please. One for one. One out, none on. Seventh inning. Rosner looks for a sign, winds and fires to Joe. Half swing, checked up, and it's ball one. One ball, no strikes to Pignatano. Charlie Neal on deck. And Don Zimmer to follow. Last of the seventh inning. Dodgers seven, the Cubs two. Rosner ready, the 1 0 pitch to Joe. Curve high for ball two. In case you've joined us late, Campy got plunked in the chest by a pitch ball in the third. And with a score 6 0, Pignatano got the catching assignment, especially since Rube Walker has a couple of stitches in his right hand. So actually, Joe, the only able bodied catcher, gets a big league look and it looked very good. Takes a strike and it's 2 1. So Joe's been riding that bench just saying, wait till I get in there, wait till I get in there. And here he is. And. Uh, First catching role in the major leagues. Been in one ball game previous as a pitch runner. The 2 1 pitch to Joe. Strike two. He takes a fastball and it's 2 2. One out, none on. Dodgers batting in the seventh, leading 7 to 2. One hit allowed by Sandy Koufax. Dodgers have picked up seven. Two two pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Pignatano. Strikeout number three for Jim Brosnan. That's 18 strikeouts in the game. And here's Charlie Neal. That's struck out, single to drive in a pair, and walk. One for two tonight. Neal hitting 274. Brosnan takes a lot of time between pitches now. Neal waits. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the right side. Morgan scoots over on the outfield grass. Makes his play just in time to get the flying Neal by an highlight. Post play at first. Side retired. So the Dodgers go out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and they left none. The end of seven innings of play. The score, the Dodgers seven, Chicago Cubs two. Okay, Al, what you say? Well, I say this, there are two terrific Sunday doubleheaders coming your way, folks. Matter of fact, some pretty tremendous baseball right down the line for the next two weeks. Next Sunday, a doubleheader, the Dodgers and the Cincinnati Reds. Well, <laughs> need we say more about that one? And the following Sunday, June 16th, that's Father's Day, the Dodgers will be playing the St. Louis Cardinals. And as a special note to the youngsters, if you'd like to treat your dad to a ball game and sit in our special TV Father's Day section, Order your $2 reserve seats by mail. Ascend to Father's Day, Brooklyn Dodgers, Box 55, Brooklyn 1, New York. Each seat, $2, in our special TV Father's Day section. Sure hope that you're uh, going to make arrangements to bring your daddy out to Father's Day. Show the old man you appreciate him a little bit. Is that right, Jerry? That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, get pop and come on out here. Yes, sir. Well, do I that. don't imagine those kids that care about about to come with the ball game, would they? Oh, no. Oh, They'll no. be really getting on, Dad. Well, it's a real way for a father and a boy to get together. What better way than right here at the ball game? How about a father and a daughter getting oh, together? Oh, that's Jerry? just as good, Al. Well, well, absolutely. absolutely. After all, you've got a cute daughter, and I'm very proud yeah. of her. sir, and she's going to bring me out here on Father's Day. How about yours? I'll bring you out here, Father's Day. Okay, <laughs> Father. <laughs> Jerry Kendall will bat for Brosnan, who goes out for a batter now after going five innings, one run, three hits, struck out three and walked two. And we have two right-handers going in the Chicago bullpen now. We'll check them up for you. Jerry Kendall, an infielder, pinch hitting against Koufax. Takes a curve for a strike one. 
Miami with the 11 strikeouts. And the last time he pitched against the Cubs, he struck out 13. Well, he has six more outs. At least. Here's a strike on the corner. Nothing in two. And he threw the change up that time and got it over. Turk Lowne joins Tom Poholsky in the bullpen. Lowne and Poholsky. Fastball inside. Ball one. One and two. Jerry Kendall pinch hitting for Jim Brosnan. Tomorrow night, same clubs over at Jersey City at Roosevelt Stadium and back to Ebbets Field on Thursday. Fastball, pop foul back upstairs, and it's still one and two. Well, it's all over at Philadelphia. The Phillies red hot, three. Cincinnati, one. So the Dodgers can pick up a little ground on Cincinnati if they can win this one. The Giants lead Milwaukee. Six to five through seven. A swing and a miss, and down he goes. Kindle out on a slow curve. Strike three, and number 12 for Koufax. Morgan coming on now with one out. 12 strikeouts for Colfax, whose previous high this year is 13, whose major league high is 14. Struck out 14 in his second major league game. Here's the pitch. Strike with a curve at the knees on the inside corner. Nothing and one to Bob Morgan. Colfax started this inning with 58 strikeouts in 49 innings. Here's a liner hit in the hole to right field for a base hit. And Morgan is on. Simoli fires it back in. That is hit number two for the Cubs off Colfax. Bob Speak coming on has walked, slide to right, and hit a home run. So Colfax rolling along here with a two-hitter. Now has 59 strikeouts to lead the National League. There goes the runner as Koufax winds, and there's no play made. Sandy kind of kicks in the dirt with his hand, realizing he kind of pulled a boo-boo there, going into a wind-up with the runner on, and Morgan just romps on down to second. See if they give him a steal on that. Ball one count to speak. Stolen base for Bob Morgan. Now Koufax takes his stretch. Here's the pitch. Inside, out of Pignatano's glove, but no advance by Morgan. Ball two on Bob Speak. Speak, a left-hand batter, has not felt the strikeout sting of Koufax yet. In fact, he belted a home run last time up. The 2-0 pitch. High and away, ball three. Speak hitting a 250, and Koufax goes behind him on the count, 3 0. One on at second, one out here in the eighth inning. Pinch batter Jerry Kindle struck out. Number 12 for Koufax. Number 19 in the game, and that uh, record, of course, is 23. That's the National League record, yes. Here's a strike in at the letters on Speak, and it's 3 and 1. That 23 mark was tied the last time Koufax pitched against the Cubs when he got 13. Cub pitchers got 10. Drabowski, 8, and Lyon had 2. 3 and 1, Koufax shakes off a sign and Speaks steps out. On its second, Bobby Morgan. Don Besson, Roger Craig behind Koufax in the Dodger bullpen. Sandy shakes it off again, and now we're going to have a conference. Koufax and Pignatano checking signs. And they might have a switch set on with a runner on at second base, and uh, Sandy wants to make sure he doesn't cross him up. Three and one. Bob Speak waiting, left-hand batter. Koufax peers down to get it now. Okay. Checks out of a stretch, delivers. 
curve high over his head and Speak is on with a walk. That's the fifth walk given up by Kofax. And Speak has gone two of them. Ernie Banks comes on now, has struck out twice and flied to center. So Banks, nothing for three, hitting 226. Two on for the Cubs in the eighth inning. One out. Dodger infield double played up. Dodgers lead seven to two, top of the eighth. Kofax out of a stretch, delivers. Long fly ball, and there it goes, deep to left field. This one is going, going. Home run for Ernie Banks. Well, before you know it, the Cubs are right back in the ball game now as Ernie Banks hit the free run homer to 7 to 5, Dodgers lead. As Banks builded one back in the lower stands in left field for his sixth home run of the year and for another thousand luckies to the VA hospital at Montrose, New York. And here comes Walt Austin out to have a talk with Kofax. The Cubs have picked up three hits in the game. Two have been home runs, and they've accounted for the five Chicago tallies. Hodges and Kofax at the mound, now waiting for Austin to come on. As Ernie Banks hit one in the stands, and it's 7-5 to five Brooklyn. Clem Levine now replaces Roger Craig in the Dodger bullpen and is throwing along with Don Besson. And the conference of the mound now, and Austin wants to find out about it. Sandy Kofax started the inning with no apparent uh, sign of what was to come. Struck out pinch batter Kendall. And he's going to stay in. Austin coming on off. After Kendall struck out, Morgan stroked a single to right field. Stole second as Kofax went into a windup. Speak then drew a walk, and Banks powdered one for a home run. Here's Lee Walls up now. He has popped out. Walked and grounded out. He's none for two. Speak and Walls, the only Cubs who have not gone down on strike. Here's the pitch. A liner hit right to Zimmer for the out. Line drive to Don, and it's two away. Little Don just kind of squatted down and made the catch. So two away now as Frank Renega comes on. He has struck out three times. Seven five, Dodgers lead, top of the eighth, Cubs batting. Two outs, none on. Lucky strike sending it to you from Ebbets Field. Here's a looper in the right center field for a base hit. This one's going to be in for extra bases going to the wall. Renega around first, digs to second now. Snyder plays the ball in the corner. Renega turns and stops at second base. A double to right center field. And the Cubs now send up Bale along with a tying run. How about that? Dodgers had a big lead of 7-0, and the Cubs now have come romping back to get in the ball game. and Kofax has been pitching brilliantly, but the home run ball has gotten him in trouble. That's just the fourth hit for Chicago. Two home runs, a single and a double, and here comes Austin again, and that may be all for Kofax, even though Day along the left-hand batter is due up next. We'll wait and see. Austin coming back to the mound to have a talk. Chicago, two right-handers, Turk Lown and Tom Poholsky working. Austin now talking with Pignatano as they both walk to the mound to Kofax. Renega belted a double to right center. And Sandy, after achieving his 12th strikeout to start this inning, has been hammered around here rather thoroughly by the Cubs. A line single to right, a walk, a long home run to left, a line out to shortstop, and a double to right center field, and he's going to leave the ball game, and Clem Levine will come on. So Colfax, after a rather brilliant performance tonight, falls off in the eighth inning, and the Cubs find the range on him and pick up three runs and bring the tying run to bat with two outs, one on. They along do up to face the oncoming Clem Levine in from the bullpen for the Dodgers. Well, while Clem makes the long walk in here, and gets his warm-up tosses down to Joe Pignatano. 
Let's turn over to Al now and uh, get a rundown on the Lucky Strike scoreboard, Al. All right, Jerry, checking up on that Milwaukee-New York ball game. It's quite a tussle at the end of eight innings. It's all tied at six and six. Six and six between Milwaukee and the Giants at the end of eight. A round of applause for Sandy Koufax as he leaves the mound and Clem Levine comes on. Philadelphia tonight defeated Cincinnati three to one. St. Louis and Pittsburgh at the end of six innings. It's St. Louis four, Pittsburgh three. The Yankees and Cleveland in the American League at the end of seven innings. It is the Yankees six, and Cleveland has four. Boston and Chicago at the end of five and a half innings, no score. Boston and Chicago scoreless end of five and a half. Washington and Detroit at the end of two and a half innings. Washington leading Detroit two to one. Baltimore and Kansas City at the end of half an inning. Baltimore nothing. Kansas City now coming to bat. Well, that's everything off the Lucky Strike scoreboard. I think Jerry has uh, LeBron's record all checked up for us as Clem takes the mound. He'll be pitching to Dale Long here in the eighth inning, in which the Chicago Cubs, as Jerry told you, to get back in the ball game have scored three times. And Ernaga's double with two outs, placed him in second base, and... Day long is always trouble. So, uh, Jerry, how about it? Okay, long is struck out, walked and fouled out, and Levine now comes in for the 20th time this year. Clem's record is 3-0. He has saved six. Now trying to save this one for Colfax. Here's the stretch, the look, and the pitch. Curve, high and outside, ball one. Roger Craig now working alone in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Levine has worked 41 and two-thirds innings and has allowed just eight earned runs. Winning three, losing none. Struck out 25 and walked nine. 1 0 count to left hand batter Dale Long. Two outs, one on the pitch. Curve for a strike, and it's one and one. Koufax worked seven and two thirds innings. Allowed five runs, just four hits. Struck out 12 and walked five. So Sandy with a fine performance. Weakened a bit in the eighth, and the Cubs got three runs on Ernie Banks Homer with two aboard. The double by Arnega then brought Austin out for the second time and Labine in the pitch. The 1 1 pitched along. Ground ball down the first baseline. Hodges makes a one hand grab on the line and the side is retired. As Hodges carried the ball to the bag for the out in time on long. So that's all in the eighth inning. Labine comes in and makes three pitches and gets the side out. For Chicago, three runs on three hits, no errors, and they left one. So at the end of the top of the eighth, score. The Dodgers 7, Chicago 5. Al? Well, Brian, would you like to take a guess at the time here in Brooklyn? Let's see how close you can get. Well, if you said it's uh, about 10.30, then you'd be about right. And if you went a little further and said it was also light-up time, well, then you're thinking the same as I am. That's it. Time to touch a match to a lucky strike. Time to settle back to the real, deep-down smoking enjoyment of this truly genuine cigarette. And believe me, a lucky is just that. Genuine because it's all cigarettes. All fine tobacco. Mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Light up a lucky. You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. To the last half of the eighth inning... On this Lucky Strike broadcast, Don Zimmer will be the first man up for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Then Labine is due, and then Amaros. And out here to fire to him is a right-hander named Tom Paholsky. And Jerry's got his record all checked up for us. Jerry? Okay, Al. Tom has won none, lost two. This is his tenth appearance. He's started five. And he's warming up now with uh, catcher Cal Neiman as Don Zimmer stands by. Waiting to start it off here in the last of the eighth inning. Dodgers seven, Cubs five, last of the eighth. And the Cubs used the home run ball to get right back in the contest. A two-run homer by Bob Speak in the sixth inning and a three-run homer by Ernie Banks in the eighth. We've had four home runs. The Dodgers have hit a pair, Snyder and Hodges. And for the Cubs, Speak and Banks. We've had uh, one double play, so... We had a 5,000 luckies to the VA hospital at Montrose, New York tonight for a total of 31 out of a quota of 34,000. Oh, we're still going along. 
Don Zimmer steps in now. Little Don has struck out, hit the double play, and flied out. So he's nothing for three and hitting 225. Tom Poholsky, big right hander, formerly with the Cardinals. Dodger seven, Cubs five, bottom of the eighth. Here's the pitch to Don. Fastball is looped up uh, past the mound. Morgan comes in from second, makes his play in time for the out, one away. Zimmer had that ball jammed right on his fist and hit on the handle of the bat out towards second base. A little squibber picked up there by Morgan from play. One out, here comes Levine. Clem as a batter has been up there ten times, has one base hit. And the guys still talk about that one as Clem belted one to the left center field wall and got a single out of it. Levine coming on with one out, none on, eighth inning. Amaros on deck and Gilliam to follow. The Dodgers got three in the first, three in the third, and one in the fifth. Chicago got two in the sixth and three in the eighth. And as of this moment, the starting pitchers, Dick Drop for Chicago and Kofax for Brooklyn, are the pitchers of decision. Here's the pitch by Paholsky. Curveball bounced one hop to Banks at third. His play is in time easily to get Levine, two up and two down here in the eighth. Sandy Amaro's coming on is none for three and hitting 302. corner for a strike one. Four and one on Amaros. 9,300 out for the ball game tonight here at Ebbets Field. Dodgers back home opening up a 15-day stand. Pitch to Amaros. Inside corner for a strike two. Nothing to the Pajolski uh, pitching to Amaros. The right-hander winds and fires. Curve ball in the dirt. Ball one. That's the first bad one he's dished up here this inning. One and two to Amaros. Lucky strike. Happy to send it to you tonight from Ebbets Field, Brooklyn. The Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs. Dodgers seven, Cubs five. Curveball swung on and missed strike three. And Amaros now runs down the line as the ball was dropped by Neiman. Neiman chased him several steps, gave up, and then lobbed the ball to Long from put out. So that's strikeout number one for Paholsky and for Cub pitching eight. For Dodger pitching 12. Side retired in order in the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and then left on. And so at the end of eight innings of play, the score, the Dodgers seven, the Cubs five. And now here's Al. Well, say, fans, you ever hear the expression good bulbs? Translated, that's baseball talk for a player with sharp eyes and a good sense of the strike zone. A guy who takes the bad ones and gets lots of wood on the good ones. Now try this one. Real smoking enjoyment. If you want to know what that means, just you light up a lucky. Why a lucky? Oh, that's easy, too. A lucky is a genuine cigarette. All cigarette. All fine tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, sir. Smoking a Lucky is a genuine pleasure. A pleasure you can help yourself to right now. Enjoy the best tasting cigarette you ever smoke. Well, Jerry, it's the last call for the Chicago Cubs. Top of the ninth. Okay, LeBron out to try to hold him back. Goes through the bottom third of the order with Cal Neiman, the catcher, Jack Luttrell, the shortstop, and then the pitcher spot due up. We'll see what's going to happen. Neiman out. He has gone down on strikes twice and flat out once. Sandy Koufax started and breezed along until he got in trouble in the eighth inning. He'd allowed one hit and two runs until that time. And then in the eighth, the Cubs tagged him for three runs. The big blow home run to Ernie Banks with two on. Neiman waits. Ninth inning, Labine delivers. The fastball is blown outside. Ball one. Dodger seven. Cubs five. Brooklyn now trying to close them out here in the ninth inning and open, open the homestand on a happy note. 
and also gained ground on the Red Legs. A swing and a miss on a fastball. Strike one. One and one count. For Chicago, Turk Lown continues to throw in the bullpen. 12 strikeouts for Koufax and eight by Chicago pitchers for a total of 20 tonight. The one one pitch. Curveball is outside. One and one. A uh, two and one. Casey Wise throwing a few in the bullpen also to get an arm loose. In case the ball gets prolonged, he might get into ac action. Two one count. Here's the pitch. Fastball is just a little bit low. Ball three. Three and one now on catcher Cal Neiman. Dodger bullpen quiet. Levine out trying to make his seventh save of the year. This is his 20th appearance. 3-1 pitch. Fly ball to center field. Snyder moves in a step. Comes over to his left to his three-step. Pounds the glove and makes the grab for the out. Neiman skies to Snyder straight away in center. And before Jack Luttrell comes on, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Dial 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodgers games and write to WOKO for the complete Dodgers schedule of games at home and away. Yours free for the asking. Be sure to give your name and address. Write Baseball WOKO, Albany, New York. Latrell will not bat. Outfielder Jim Bolger will bat for him. And that's why Wise is warming up in the bullpen. Here's the pitch now. Bolger takes a strike. 0 and 1. Chicago Cub utility outfielder Jim Bolger batting with one out in the ninth and Labine trying to slam the door in their face. Here's the pitch. Curve low outside. Ball one. One and one to Bolger. Pahoski is due up next. But Walt Warren is out in the on-deck circle swinging a couple of bats. One-one count. Levine winds and fires. Curveball, nub foul off to the right to the Dodger bat rack. Captain Pee Wee Reese comes out of the dugout to make the play on that one. Pee Wee's still out with that full side muscle. One ball, two strikes on pinch hitter Jim Bolger. Lyon has stopped throwing in the bullpen for Chicago now. He's been down there for several weeks, so perhaps he's had enough. Umpire Tom Gorman rubs up a new one for Levine, lobs it out to him. Dodgers seven, Cubs five. We're in the ninth inning. One out, none on. Milwaukee now has scored in the ninth and leads the Giants seven six. Top of the ninth. Philly beats Cincinnati three one. Here's the one two pitch. Curveball, a fly ball to right field. Simone coming fast for it. Can't get it. It's a base hit. Bolger on dunking one into right near the line. A base hit for the Chicago Cubs. That is hit number five for Chicago. The first off the line. And it brings on Walt Moran, another pinch batter. Warren, uh, Moran who swings that bat with a lot of authority. Has good power. He's a left-hand batter. So again, the Cubs now send the tying run to the plate, and Pignatano goes out to talk to Levine. And it might be that Joe, rather new in this National League catching business, is going to ask Clem how he wants to pitch to him. So Pajolski is out after working one inning, and he got the side out in order, and Moran now, Walt Moran, coming on to bat. Like the last time the Cubs were here, Moran fell to the home run off Labine to get a tie-up ball game. Grand slammer that time. Here's a curveball for strike one. That tied the ball game up. We played about uh, 16. Uh, no, played a few, I think. Four and one. Labine delivers. Fastball on the corner for strike two to Moran. Ten. 
not only missed the six, Alan. <laughs> Strike two count. Walt Morin, pinch hitting for pitcher Tom Bohomsky. One out, one on. Ninth inning. Cubs batting. Dodgers lead seven to five. Levine delivers. Curve low for a ball. One and two. On deck is Bobby Morgan, Chicago second baseman. Pinch batter Jim Bolger on first. Single to right field with one out. Cubs have five hits. Dodgers have seven. Curveball bounced foul off the first base side. Hits the box seat railing and rolls out toward the foul line. And the first base umpire, Hal Dixon, throws it out. One ball, two strikes on pitch batter Walt Morin. Don Buffett now back to the firing line in the bullpen for the Dodgers. One and two. Here's the pitch. Curveball looped in the left field along the line, peeling off. Foul. Out of play. Morin swinging late. Sliced or foul down the left field line. One and two. Dodger infield a bit to the right and double play depth. Neal way wide of third. Zimmer halfway up and over a bit toward uh, second. Gilliam back about normal depth on the right side. And Hodges moving in and out behind the runner at first. One and two. Here's the pitch. Up high for ball. 2-2 two -two now on Walt Morin. Pinch hitter here in the ninth inning. Dodger seven. Chicago Cubs five. First game of the series. Tomorrow night there'll be at Jersey City. Thursday night right back here at Ebbets Field. And over the weekend it'll be Cincinnati. Single games on Friday night and Saturday afternoon. Doubleheader Sunday. Here's the pitch. Fastball. High outside. Ball three. And now Levine has worked the count out full in the spot. 3-2 on the hitter, Walt Morin. With one out, one on. And the Dodger lead, two runs. So now we'll see how Chicago's going to play it. Bolger at first runs good. Has good speed, and we'll see if they're going to let him go. With the Cubs two runs behind, they might play it safe. Three two. The bind checked. Bolger holding, and the pitch is swung on a line out of center. Snyder coming on fast, can't play it. Base hit, and Bolger goes in and holds at second base. Snyder's throw comes to Zimmer at the cutoff spot, and the Cubs have the tying runs on now with Bobby Morgan coming on. And two pinch hitters in a row for Bob Stepping deliver, and the Cubs. Have two on with one out, and Bobby Morgan coming on. Struck out, flat out, walked and single, scored twice. And it looks like we're going to have a runner now for Morin, and it'll probably be Wise, an infielder who was running in the bull, uh, who was throwing in the bullpen, and we'll see. Casey Wise coming on to run. And here's a change for the Dodgers now. Carl Farrello is going to right field. Gino Simoli will go to left field, and out will come Sandy Amaral. So for the defense, Austin makes the change and sends Perot to the right here in the ninth. Into left field goes Simoli. And a runner at first base for Morin is Casey Wise. All kinds of changes going on in this ball game, far from being over. As the Cubs now have roared back from a 7-0 deficit, to a spot where it's 7-5 and they have the tying runs on with one out of the ninth and Levine trying to get him out. Casey Wise, pinch runner for Morin, who singled the center on the 3-2 pitch. Right so while all this is going on, let's light up a lucky lean back and see what happens. Things getting a bit hectic here at Ebbets Field tonight. Levine now uh, ready to work on Morgan. It's one for three. Here's the pitch. Foul ball at the plate. Strike one. Cole 
back for five innings, had thrown a no-hitter at the Cubs. Then in the sixth, he walked Morgan, and then Speak hit a home run, the first hit, and two runs. Then in the eighth, after he struck out the first man, Morgan singles, Speak uh, walked, and Banks hit a home run to make it 7-5. Then after Walls lined out, Ornega doubled, and that brought on Levine. Then got uh, the third out then, Day along, and now got the first out of the ninth, but back-to-back -back single to put the Cubs right back in business. The 0-1 pitch. Inside for ball, and the count is one and one. One ball, one strike. Ninth inning. Dodgers seven, and the Cubs five. Seven hits for Brooklyn and six for Chicago. Here's the look in the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two, one and two. Levine working on Morgan with Bob Speak on deck. The Dodger infield of a play depth. The Giants tied it up in the ninth inning. Boy, what a ball game that one is. 7-7. Seven, seven. The runs have been mostly one at a time in that one. Here's the pitch. A pop fly at second base. Gilliam comes in. Infield fly rule is on, and Gilliam makes the play. Morgan is out. He broke his bat. Hill went right off the fist. So there are two outs now, and Bob Speak coming on as the last hope for Chicago. But he's had a pretty good night. He walked, fly out, hit a home run, and walked. Scored twice. Speak hitting 250, one for two tonight. If the Dodgers can hang on and win, they'll move to within two games of the top. The Phillies now have moved to within one of the top. One and a half, is it? One and a half. All right, left-hand batter, Bob Speak, facing Clem Levine with two out, two on in the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. Curve strike. Nothing in one. Fans kind of holding their breath here at Ebbets Field. And for you, well, light up a lucky, and let's see. On one on Bob Speak, left-hand batter, hitting in the number two spot for Chicago. Here's the check, and here's the pitch. Foul ball bounced off to the left of the plate, strike two. is now one strike away from recording his seventh save of the year to give Koufax his fourth win, but that's a mighty big pitch. Well, let's just wait and see. Strike two as Speak steps out now. The Cubs have Bolger at second and Wise at first. Dodgers with a two-run lead here in the ninth inning. Outfield around to the right, infield also. Waiting as Levine comes set, delivers. Outside with a fastball, one and two. Clem tried to make him chase a bad one, but Speak wouldn't go for it. One and two to Bob Speak. <laughs> Levine ready again. The one two look. Here's the pitch. Curve outside, ball two. Just missed the outside corner. Clem trying to bend one in over that corner, trying to keep the ball away from Speak, keep him from pulling toward that short right field wall. Dodgers seven, Cubs five, two out, two on, ninth inning. And a 2-2 count on the batter, Bob Speak. Levine ready. Checks the runners out of a stretch. Delivers. Got him swinging. Down he goes. Strike three on a curveball into the hands. Speak is out. The Dodgers win. For Levine, strike out number one. And for the Cubs in the ninth. No runs. Two hits. No errors. They left two on. Well, that's the ball game, fans. The final score. The Dodgers seven. The Cubs five. We'll be back with the final recap of the game in just a moment. But first, here's pretty Miss Dorothy Collins. Lucky strike, lucky strike, better tasting 
lucky strike, lucky strike, lucky strike. It's so good for the taste you like. Every day more people say that luckies do taste better. So hurry on down to the shop you like and buy a carton of lucky strike. And buy a carton of lucky strike. Well, here are your totals for tonight's Brooklyn Dodger win. For the Dodgers, seven runs, seven hits, no errors. They left six men on tonight. And the winning pitcher is Sandy Koufax. He went seven and two-third innings. He's now won four times. Twice he has lost. Two home runs hit tonight for the Dodgers. Snyder had one in the third inning. And Hodges had one in the fifth inning. For the Chicago Cubs, five runs, six hits, one error. They left six men on here tonight. Their starting pitcher, Dick Drott, is the loser. His record is now three wins and six losses. And he loses to the Dodgers the first time he faces them. He's 0-1 with them. And as far as the series between these two clubs concerned, the Cubs have won no ball games, and the Brooklyn Dodgers have won four. So tomorrow night, it'll be Drysdale and Kaiser over at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City for 7.55 airtime. Final score again is the Dodgers 7 and the Cubs 5. We'd like to remind you again that tonight's game, like every Brooklyn Dodger game throughout the season, was brought to you by the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn Brewers of Schaefer Beer, America's oldest lager beer, and by Lucky Strike, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. It's made by the American Tobacco Company. Tobacco is our middle name. Remember now to tune us in again tomorrow evening for the game between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. Final score again here, the Dodgers 7 and the Chicago Cubs 5. And now this is Al Helper on behalf of Jerry Doggett, Vince Scully, speaking for Lucky Strike Cigarettes and Schaefer Beer in cooperation with Sports Network, wishing you all a very pleasant good evening from Ebbets Field. Now stay tuned for Sports Extra. Dial 1460 WOKO for the Brooklyn Dodger games and write to WOKO for the complete Dodger schedule of games at home and away. Yours free for the asking. Be sure to give your name and address and write baseball. WOKO, Albany, New York. Stay tuned for Musical Interlude and the news at 11 o'clock.